All right, all right, all right. I think we are good to go. Yes, we are. All right, shalom, brothers and sisters. I'm Elder Rick Harshaw, the Gathering of Christ Church. We're fighting through this spirit of so-called Halloween. <laughs> all praises be to the Most High. Uh, we have Elder Lawyer in the live in the studio with me. We have Elder Gaja on standby, and of course, we have you all participating in our weekly broadcast. Okay, topic of discussion this evening. It so happened to be what they call Halloween, October 31st. The topic of discussion. Now, I, I really just don't, don't, don't want to pinpoint Christians today, so just, just broaden this your, your scope beyond the title. But I wanted to emphasize Christians for a purpose in this because we're going to include Jews, Muslims, whatever the case is. Why no one can give a definitive stance on Halloween or teach the wickedness it's based off of the origin of the evil, which is Halloween. You get all these vague, uh, what you would call uh, commentaries. Mm -hmm from Christian authorities concerning whether or not it's okay for children to celebrate Halloween. Now, you know what our stance is. Our stance is the Bible's stance. But the problem with the world today, the whole world have went, have turned their back on God and have ignored the Bible altogether or tried to excuse off witchcraft, uh, 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 sin in itself, uh, 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 what you would call perversions, unlawful, immoral behavior. The world excuses it off. Hence our title today, Christians tempting God on Halloween, a seat at Satan's table. Now, like I said, we, we're going to get opinions from across the board, not just Christians today. Okay, we're going to try to stay as open as we can concerning of the Christians' authorities' mm -hmm. stance on Christianity. We're going to let you hear what their stances are. Is it vague? Uh, do they take a biblical stance? The biggest issue I have here, okay, and the biggest issue that we keep uh, what you would call drumming home to our brothers and sisters is this. The Christians and the, the religious authorities should at least teach the children in their churches the origin of Halloween. Okay, you should at least say, well, okay, we're under grace that you're teaching grace, but let me give you the full board spectrum, the nuts and bolts, every part of whether or not, you know, what is, what was Halloween from his inception? What was his, what was it called? Who worshiped it? Now, I don't want to put the cart before the horse, uh, elder lawyer, mm -hmm. right? But I even have some FBI statistics that was compiled, you know, in the early 2000s concerning the uptick on what you would call children going missing at certain times of year, certain times of calendar year, certain times, certain months within a calendar year, there's an uptick on children, you know, in a high number being, uh, you know, kidnapped or missing altogether during certain times of year. FBI statistics we're going to go into today. So, I know I, 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 you wouldn't believe what we fought through to actually be before you right now. And all types of things were going on over here uh, as far as uh, technical but, and otherwise. But you know what? We're going to fight through it. Why? I believe our brothers and sisters need to hear this particular broadcast this evening on Halloween. We have statistics on top of statistics. We have a few videos we would like to share. 
okay? No way we were going to go through, through with this without showing you, giving you the objectivity as far as the objective commentary from re religious authorities throughout the earth, be it Jews, be it Christians, or Muslims. And at the end of this, at the end of it, okay, we're going to show, show everyone everywhere what God say concerning this without, without any vagueness. Okay. Now let me see, uh, make sure my our brothers and sisters on YouTube. All right. We're clear. Okay. We're good. We're good on YouTube. Great. All right. We do have two hours, so mm -hmm. that's enough time. Yes, sir. Two hours and nine mm -hmm. minutes, and we'll do a little overtime if need be. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we have to get ready to get on a plane early uh, tomorrow and get to Texas. Now, topic again. Christians tempting God on Halloween. Have Christians all together turned away from God, celebrating known pagan days, such as Halloween. Does it even matter to God if we allow our children, our children to partake? Put on the costumes, go knock on the doors, trick or treat, get candy. Is it innocent or something even more sinister? Well, brothers and sisters, okay, God is with us. Well, brothers and sisters, it will shock you to know what we're going to expose this evening, especially the reason for these particular holidays, uh, the reason why they target, or they more so uh, gear these particular holidays towards children. It's not what you think. A lot of us grew up believing, well, it's because the adults cared for the children that these holidays were made. These traditions were made, uh, Christmas, mm. Easter, Halloween, fun time. You're going to find the real reason behind this, right? It's going to shock you. Brothers and sisters, it will shock you to know what we're going to expose this evening with FBI data that we've found online. It's easily gotten data that anyone can find out how many children go missing this time of year. And the numbers don't lie. It's out there for you. Are Christians, here's another question. Are Christians actually exposing our children to Satanist for the occult initiations and even worse? When we as Bible believers be begin to walk that middle ground saying, well, it's okay to partake in the world and the occult, but still love Jesus. Are we telling our children it's okay to dove, dove into or participate in the occult activity, which leads to, you know, damnation? Christians have a hand in this. Now, what we would like to get out of this, this evening, brothers and sisters, is to take the information uh, that was compiled for you this evening and warn everyone you know that's Christians everywhere. Let them know that they could be tempting God on Halloween and giving their children over to Satan. Okay? Now, let me pull in Gaja real quick. I think Gaja is with me here. Let's see. One moment. Uh, let me know if you're with me, Gaja. Shalom. Okay, I, I, I'm hearing echo. Come on, I hear you, but I'm hearing an echo there. Yeah, put a headphone on if you can. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> put headphones on. Okay, is that, is that better? 
Uh, that's better. You can all hear Elder Gaja right there. He's he's in California right now. Shalom. How are you doing, Gaja? I'm blessed, Elder. I'm blessed, man. All praises to the Most High. Okay. Here. Okay. Well, I hope you all can hear Gaja clearly. I have him here. I'm going to jump right in, Gaja. I'm, we well beyond the, behind the time right now. Okay. No uh, okay. You've heard the topic. I'll let you in in a moment. Christians tempting God on Halloween. Check this out. I need you, you Elder Lawyer, to grab the definition mm -hmm. of uh, Samhain. Mm -hmm. Right? Samhain, an ancient pagan Celtic uh, uh, traditions. So that we can get the origin of Halloween first. Okay? A matter of fact, I think I have it before us so that other brothers and sisters can actually read it with us, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do that. One moment, let's do it that way. Okay. All right, there you go. Read this with us, uh, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. Read it. Uh, this is from the sun.co.uk. Yes. Spooky season. What is Sam Hain? What is Sam Hain? Now, the majority of Christians or those in the Western world uh, is few and far between that actually even know that this is connected with Halloween. Mm -hmm. What we're reading here, what you see in here is the original name of Halloween before it was rebranded in the Western world and pushed as a tradition for fun on our children. Mm -hmm. What is Samhain? Let's go. What is Samhain? Does it take place on Halloween? And what happened at the ancient pagan festival? Come on. What is Samhain? What is Samhain? In the Celtic days, Britain was a pagan country. Come on. And one of the most important celebrations was Samhain, or the Feast of the Dead. The Feast of the Dead. See that pumpkin in there? See that candy's there? Mm -hmm. Your children can be those sacrifices we see on those old cartoons, Hansel and Gretel, mm. with the witch uh, cooking the brew for child sacrifice. You, rem you remember that old uh, uh, children's story that, that was read to us, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, right. in first and second grade, grade Hansel and Gretel getting the bowl and pot ready for the children, right? Come on. It was one of four Gaelic seasonal festivals. Yes. And was widely observed across Ireland, Scotland, and the Isle of Man. European tradition. Okay. Okay. This was, uh, this began in Celtic Europe. Right? Read. Mm -hmm. Celts believe that on this day, the worlds of the living and the dead became blurred, and ghosts returned to earth. And ghosts, what? Return to earth. Now, what we're giving you is what any Christian can research. Right? Come on. But the pagans didn't fear the dead, and Samhain was a time for Druid prophecies. Now, for those who don't know what a Druid is, a Druid is a sorcerer. Witches, warlocks, conjurers. Now, in a moment, we're going to show you what the Bible speaks of or, or, or says concerning that. Druids. Mm -hmm. Right? Come on. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind, I'll just read the definition here for Druid. Come on. Uh, Druid. A priest, magician, or soothsayer in the ancient Celtic religion. There you go. Okay. Conjuring the dead. The living conjuring the dead, demon possession, in agreement with Satan himself through his priest, right? Mm. Come on. Does it take place on Halloween? Does it take place on Halloween is the question. Go on. Sam Hain marked the end of the summer harvest in Britain, Ireland, and northern France, and the beginning of winter. A time of year often associated with death. With what? With death. Now, have we made an agreement with death and, and hell as quote-unquote Bible-believing Christians? And I'm saying this for Christians more so. Why? 
I grew up going to church every Sunday, singing in the choir, okay, and was edged on by all adults back then, even my parents in ignorance. I'm not blaming them because they perpetuate the curse also, right? But all in all, I was taught as a child that Halloween was okay. As a what? As a starch believing Christian. Not once growing up as a child was I told that, that this particular holy day was rooted in evil, witchcraft, sorcery, and even, even child sacrifice. Okay? It was only through the grace of the Most High that we as children, especially growing up where we grew up at, didn't end up like a lot of our children that go missing from year to year. Right? Mm -hmm. Now finish reading what you have, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. Uh, it goes on to say, in the 8th century, in the 8th century, Pope Gregory III made November 1st a day to honor saints and martyrs. See that? So this was a Christian back day, right? Rooted in paganism, witchcraft, in agreement with death, Satan, and the Catholics covered it by claiming that it would be called Saints Day instead of Samhain. See? Same thing they do with Christmas. Okay? Covering their evil satanic uh, uh, days with what? Biblical characters so that Christians will believe it everywhere that this has something to do with God, Jesus Christ, and the Bible. And there's no wonder, brothers and sisters, many Christians have become unbelievers because they, they, they realize the deception begins with the trusted church authority. And when that comes to play, when you begin to do your research and realize that you can't even trust those who you thought were uh, their, their, their whole purpose, their sole purpose was to guide you into the kingdom of heaven. If you can't trust a godly person who's holding the Bible, then who can you trust? It was evil from its inception. The Catholic Church hid the evil worships and sacrifices and also seances to the dead by covering it with the name called saints day to make everyone believe that the saints in the bible including christ would have something to do with conjuring the dead and demon possession and going into the spiritual realm uh, uh in connection with the occult these things were established, brothers and sisters, by Satanist. Okay? Wolves in sheep's clothing. Finish reading, other lawyer. Mm -hmm. Come on. It says, Come on. To keep peace with the pagans, he made sure All Saints Day incorporated some of the traditions of Samhain. See that? To keep in peace with the pagans as a compromise with the pagans. He made sure All Saints Day incorporated some of the traditions of Sam Hain. This was a Christian push. This have nothing to do with the Bible itself. Pagans masquerading as Christians pushed this occult tradition on society. Mm -hmm. Come on. The day before October 31st, 30, 31st, Salakia became known as All Hallows' Eve. And over time, this evolved into a secular event called Halloween. It evolved into Halloween, brothers and sisters. It evolved. Right? Now, let's be fair here. I got some statistics in a moment. But let's be fair. I played this last year, but let's get... Get, get an opinion from a Christian on whether or not one, a child or others, should celebrate Halloween. 
Listen to this. A Christian. We're going to ask a Christian. We're going to ask a Muslim. And we're going to ask a Jew. <laughs> right? Let's start with uh, the Christian. Hello, I'm Jamie Jackson, spokesman for the Master's Seminary, and have the great privilege of being joined once again by Dr. Nate Buznitz. So we talked a while ago about blood moons. Let's talk about full moons and Halloween. Should Christians and can Christians celebrate Halloween? Yeah, with Halloween right around the corner, that's a question that a lot of Christians are thinking about this time of year. And some would go back and look at the history of where Halloween comes from, and they would note that there are some pagan influences and in some of the traditions that have become associated with Halloween. Mm -hmm. but I think now, is he not downplaying the origin of Halloween here? He said some would go back and see, see its pagan roots and mm -hmm. see that it's rooted in paganism. Is he not downplaying that with, uh, with, with a guitar in the back? Mm -hmm. Right? Where's the disdain for Satan's day at? Now, notice, like I've mentioned before, they have a black guy and a white guy. Okay? They've, they've placed both of these races before you on purpose. Okay? So it can cover across the board. Mm -hmm. White Christians, black Christians. Right? Listen. American culture, Halloween has really become more of a secular holiday. It doesn't really have those religious overtones anymore. In terms of how Christians think about how and even if they should participate in Halloween, I think there's a couple principles that they need to keep in mind. First and foremost, they need to avoid anything that smacks of that which would be demonic or uh, immodest, uh, anything that smacks of debauchery or sexual per So, so, okay, you can celebrate Halloween as a Christian, according to him. But stay away from the gory, evil part of it. Hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Is, isn't that what he's saying? So is there a good part of Halloween? Let's find out, because actually he's saying that, yes, you can follow it, which is a Christian, it's good, but stay away from the bad stuff in it, mm. right? <laughs> Let's listen. Immorality, these are things that Christians need to avoid. And there are some in our culture who try and use Halloween as an opportunity to celebrate those deeds of darkness. Mm -hmm. I think that's what Paul is talking about, at least in part, in places like Ephesians 5. Mm -hmm. And Christians need to avoid... The we're going we're gonna to show you what Paul said on this. ...full deeds of darkness. Our, our job is to actually confront those things and avoid those things in our culture in order to be those who are living in a way that honors and pleases Christ. Let's look at the other side of the spectrum because is it fair to say that this is also maybe a Christian liberty issue as well? I mean, what about those who feel... Christian liberty. Okay, now here we go now. We have a Christian liberty thing, which means you're, you're covered under grace. Okay. Homosexual. Christian liberty. Okay. Following holy days that have nothing to do with the Bible that are, that's rooted in Satanism. Liberty. When the Bible says that one should never partake in liberty, which would call, cause others to fall. Right? So, what is a Christian's example of liberty? Liberty means I'm excused. Maybe convicted about celebrating it. Well, that actually brings me to the second principle. So the first principle, anything that is overtly sinful, anything that is sinful, needs to be avoided by Christians. But there are activities associated with Halloween that are not necessarily inherently sinful. 
for a little child to put on an innocent costume and meet their neighbors and get some candy. Uh, the Bible doesn't specifically prohibit an innocent costume kind of behavior. So it, it does raise a how many lies candy. and contradictions. Uh, the Bible doesn't specifically prohibit that kind of behavior. Liar. So it, it does raise a question of Christian liberty. And when we think about Christian liberty, two of the main passages that we might go to would be Romans 14 and 15 and 1 Corinthians 8 and 9, where the Apostle Paul talks about Christians eating food that was offered to idols. Mm -hmm. It's not a direct parallel to Halloween, but certainly the principle. So why are, made, are you mentioning it? Right. If it's not a direct parallel to Halloween, why are you mentioning it? Mm. He asked about Halloween, dude. You see these Satanist folks? Oh, isn't he nice? A matter of fact, I'll tell you what. Why don't I sit down with some uh, North American Indians, which are God's people, Gadites, and have Thanksgiving? Chapters would apply to something like this. And I think there's maybe three basic principles there, maybe more, but three that I want to mention that are very important. And I'll phrase them in the form of questions. Number one, is this activity something that dishonors Christ? That's a question that Christians need to ask. 1 Corinthians 10 31, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. So can I glorify God in doing this activity? That's the positive way of stating it. Or on the negative side, does this activity actually dishonor the Lord in some way? If it does, then Christians ought to avoid it. Then a second principle or a second question is, is this something, is this activity something that violates my conscience? And Paul brings that principle out, especially in 1 Corinthians 8 and 9, that it is a sin to violate your conscience. But so, what if you haven't been taught correctly, according mm -hmm. to the Bible, right. to know what's consciously, consciously mm -hmm. sin? Mm -hmm. If you're being taught that sin doesn't apply, then your conscience won't convict you. If you're being told that you're covered by liberty and that the law of God is done away with. So suppose your conscience has been programmed. Your mind has been programmed to accept Halloween as righteous. Your conscience won't, your conscience won't convict you. Mm -hmm. Even Paul stated that uh, I had not known lust unless this, the law said thou shalt not covet. So he needed the law in the scriptures to prick his conscience to know right from wrong in exactly order for to have that conviction in order for you to be convicted concerning any sin you must have you must be conscious of the of the of the of the law you're breaking mm -hmm. of the sin you're partaking in more but uh, hey the piano is really me in though <laughs> the, should not the guitar is really me in that violates their conscience and then a third principle a third question is is this an activity that might cause a weaker brother to stumble? In other words, another Christian who has a more sensitive conscience than I do, if they see me doing this and then they do it themselves, will they be led into sin because they'll actually be violating their conscience? So we want to be very sensitive to the consciences of others. And that's part of looking out for one another in the body of Christ. So. These are the basic principles that would apply to how Christians ought to think about liberty issues. And I think Halloween would be one that would fit under that category. Now, I need y'all to look at this real quick. I need y'all to really look at this now, right? Stick with me here. And remember these words from the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, thank God for another day and for another opportunity and privilege to share with you the living word of God. Okay, let me, continue. okay let me get him out of here. Look who we have here. Right? Mm. You see what we have here? We have a Jew. Now, we heard what the, you heard what the Christian had to say. Mm -hmm. Let's hear the Jew. Right? Let's hear the Jew. You say every day in davening, that uh, the Abishta gave us thank thank you Hashem for giving us the Torah Chaye Elam Nata Besechenu life is planted in Torah and perhaps a, a, a peerish could also be that the normal the secular way of life there's a lot of Torah halachas 
that a Yidin have to study to know how to live a Yiddish life. Even Chaye Eilam, the day-to-day -day life, amongst Lahavdal Gayim, there is a lot to learn. Okay, so, then you have to listen to him clearly here, because why? Christians will get totally lost in, in the deceptive tongue this Jewish rabbi is using. Okay, you notice he, he keep throwing out there with a negative connotation, Goyim. Mm -hmm. Well, for those who don't know or speak or have studied Hebrew, Goyim is Hebrew for cattle. So he's calling all people outside of Jews animals. One of the things that come up, Mipam Lapam, and, 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 is the Goyesha secular holidays. What is the status? Is a Jew allowed to celebrate those ho holidays? Because we know the primary Isser is, a Yid, uh, a Yid who is Maimon Bamuna Shleiman, the Abishter, is not allowed to act and do what, what the Goyim do. They're not allowed to do what the cattle does, other people outside of Jews. And Vinifalinu, and we are different, Hashem made us different. So the question becomes to celebrate, obviously, the Goetia holidays is one level, and that especially those holidays that have a root in Avodah Zorah. Avodah Zorah, we got to stay away as far as possible. But not even to, obviously, not to celebrate those holidays, but just to show a little participation, like the holiday of Halloween. That in the secular world, the, the custom is that. Uh, Children go around collecting candies. May a Jew participate in that, or is that a question of <laughs> Now, the Yoide Dover have done investigation and done thorough uh, research to show that the, the root, the source of this holiday, the Goyish holiday of Halloween, is Makaira Be There is a connection to Avaida Zara. The second you attribute some act to Avedah Zara, it becomes much, much more strict. As we know that the Ramon Shulchan Aruch and Hilchas Chukas Agoy says that the, the amongst the Isser of Leisel Chub and Chukas Agoy, there are two levels. There are things that are done that everybody does, Goyim do, and how the Yidin do. Just that's because the way to do business, and the example would be... Okay, the guy's double talking. Let me translate <laughs> for this devil here, okay? It's okay to do business because Goy, people outside of Jews are worth nothing. So he can make money off of you, even though he don't mm -hmm. celebrate it himself. Right. He can sell you Halloween yeah. candy. Yeah, he can sell you Halloween candy. He can sell he you can, costumes. He, he can sell you costumes. He can, he can do witchcraft. He can, he can do all these things as long as the children, the, the souls of the Goyim goes to hell and he benefit. It's, 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 A, it's all kosher. The type of uniform that a doctor wears, the type of uniform that other professionals wear. So even a Yid, a yid is allowed to wear that because it has no connection to Chukas HaGoy. And then there is some uh, uh, customs that are attributed or connected to, to Avedah Zara, where over there you have to be much more Makbid because Avedah Zara is Avedah Zara. Now, because Halloween, Sharsha Avedah Zara, even though, yes, most of the, peop most of the people today who celebrate it, don't even know or don't even do it because of the connection to Avedah Zara. But because Sharsha Avedah Zara, you have to be more Makbin. Now, whether or not if a child comes around to your door, you, you should be able to give candy, um, there is another issue. The issue is, for sure, the Yid is not celebrating the, the, the holiday. For sure, the Yid is not giving the can, candy because of the holiday. So if it, 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 because of the concept of Sholem and Eva, not to create animosity between the Yid and the Havdul Gaim, that's another point why a Yid might be able to give the candy. Okay, okay, here you go. Another hypocrite. He's not supposed to celebrate it at all, according to his traditions, but it's okay to give candy because he's causing the Goyim, the cattle, to sin against their God. And it's all good because they're not accountable anyway. Why? Because Christian Goyim, Gentiles, are just cattle to them. So they can participate mm. without, without any recourse, mm. without any consequence, because they're the Jews. To give you a perspective how to look at these type of halachas, I want to quote to you a, shayla, a, a tshuva 
that Rab Shmuel Vazna al Vashalim and Shevet Halazi Shevet Halevi Chelik Zayin Simin Kuf Lamed Vav discusses. He discusses based on the Taisefta. The Taisefta says that Hamesapik Bamerake to Lishal Heves Hareza Midarke Amiri. If somebody makes a bomb a bonfire and around the fire everybody you clap and dance. You should know that's darke amari. That's the goyisha way of doing things, and a yid is not allowed to do it. So You're not. Was, that's a dark way of doing things. You going around the fire, making bonfires like Satanist, and the goyin, the top rabbi warlocks are not supposed to do this. As Reb Shmuel Vazno of Shalom was asked, why is it that we find during the summer months in camps that people, the, the, even in Jewish camps and frumer camps, they make these big fires. But why do you do it, Jew? Or the campers and counselors go around the fire and sing and dance. Is there a question of chukas agoy? And he begins by saying that based on that tesef, there's taka problem. Just a simple thing like that. It's a chukas agoy. It's a goyish thing to do. We're not allowed to do it. But okay, now, okay, let's get him out of here now. Right? Now, what's the problem here, brothers and sisters? If, I, if you... You or your child is seeking righteousness. What is the answer to this question? Okay, for this child. Mm. If I go to a Christian and I want to celebrate, I want to celebrate Halloween. Is it okay, Pastor? You get, we all get what ambiguous answers. You go to the Jew. Hey. Can I celebrate Halloween? Well, you are a cattle, so God, God is not viewing you anyway as, as a person that's accountable to his law. So you're an animal, so you can do whatever you want to do anyway, because by you doing what you would like to do, the Jews benefit. That's what he just said. Right? A Christian is saying, well, it depends on how you feel while you're doing it. And as long as you're not violating your heart, sure, celebrate it. Right? But no one is telling us what God said concerning this and what the Bible states concerning it. And that is the problem, folks. This guy, this Jewish guy, studies Torah. Why didn't he tell you what Torah say concerning witches, warlocks, bonfires, putting on the costumes, celebrating Goyim days? Why didn't, he, why didn't he tell you what the Torah say concerning that? We will. See? Why couldn't the Christian church come straight out and say, well, instead of it being rooted in pagan festivals, give us the biblical law concerning celebrating Halloween. It's in there. See? <laughs> now, without any further ado, let's hear the Muslim. We're going to give everyone their time. Well, let's get rid of the let's get rid of the Edomite here. Let's get rid of the Edomite claiming to be a Jew and is not. And let's pull up the Muslim. Get ready, y'all. Get ready. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. The Celtic people of the north used to believe that during the fall season their year began. And actually for the Celtics, their New Year's was November 1st. October 31st was the final day of the year for the Celtic people of the north. And that day was called the day of Samhain. And this individual was supposed to be the, 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 their god of, of, of the spirits of the dead, of evil again. And according to their belief, the evil spirits would rise to the surface and would terrorize people on that evening. And on that evening, if you did something wrong to a person, they'd come back to get you on that night. So some people would put on a disguise. So you couldn't recognize them on October 31st on that evening. And then they would be safe. Also, they would burn fires. Now the only thing we find left of that is the jack-o-lantern that they were put inside of their window, window made from the pumpkin. 
what actually happened in Europe is that the church moved All Saints Day, a day for the saints. They moved it from May 13th to November 1st in 1834 AD. And so what they said was that the 31st night is All Hallows Evening. We all know that. All Hallows Evening, which in America later became known as Halloween. Yeah. Halloween. And they depict the forces of evil. What is happening now is that the children... Come on, hold on, hold up. Let's get it back. Put on disguises. They dress as little devils, little witches as goblins, vampires, anything evil, and they go out. And now with the new American way, they do trick-or-treat. And they come to your house asking for food. Now, we, some, all, we all know this, but I need to know whether or not it's okay for a Muslim... To celebrate Halloween. Here you go. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. The question we get a lot is regarding Halloween. Is it halal? Is it haram? Can you give out candy? Can you still go through a celebration even if you don't believe in it? But before we can answer any of that, we have to look at the roots of any celebration, anything, do historic research. And in it, we, we turn to a book published by the National Geographic Society called an now, now the first thing I would like y'all to recognize brothers and sisters is that the Muslim religion which is an anti-Christ religion at its core Babylonian Persian mythology goes straight to the history of Halloween now what what does that do for a Christian automatically if your child believe in Christ and you're giving them ambiguous answers and claiming that they can go with their conscience. And then you send your child outside to go to the store and they run into one of these guys and give history. Mm -hmm. Which side will your child choose eventually? Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I preference this. Are we exposing our children who believe in Christ to Satanists? by not giving them the truth concerning these holidays because the Muslims will. Mm. Now, the Jew was ambiguous on purpose because he's, he says, listen, Goyim, your cattle, doesn't matter. You need to celebrate it because there's, there's no rules for cattle. You're an animal, okay? And, and you know, Rosh Hashanah, we just need to make money off of you, okay? It's kosher to just make money off of you. You're, you're worth nothing. And then the Christian is saying, well, you're under liberty and not telling us what God say. But yet the Muslim antichrist is actually giving us what? Constructive real history. And this is why the majority of Christians today are losing. They are afraid to tell people the truth. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go there a little later. Why are Christians afraid to tell the children right from wrong according to the Bible? We're gonna get there a little later, okay? And Gaja, I would like you all to, I would like you to answer that along with the audience, okay? Why are the Christians purposely omitting this information? Why can't they just say yes or no concerning God? There's a reason for that. But, we, but we'll, we'll tackle that in a moment. Common history of common things. It's from a non-biased perspective, it's not a Muslim perspective, it's not a Christian perspective, just historic research of what we have as common practices today. In it they write about Halloween, that this was of the Celtics of Ireland took this as a sacred ritual. We all know that. Worshipping, devil worshipping, druid bases, a religious festival on the 31st of October. Then any Muslim Christian or Jew who follows their faith should not participate in such a festival. You see that? What did this Muslim chest do, folks? This Muslim gave an definitive answer. You should not celebrate Halloween, period. Now, mind you, I can find all types of witchcraft and evil uh, uh, rituals within Islam itself. But what I'm showing you here where Christians contradict themselves, Muslims swoop in. Hmm. 
They'll stand on anything that will break the faith of those that believe in Christ. That's the point, <laughs> right? That's the point, right? You have anything to say before I, I move in or uh, go through quite a things? few things. I, I, go, you, come on, let's go. Okay, yeah. So going back to the other video, the video we watched previously before yes. this uh, with the two Christian guys, there were a yeah. few things mentioned that I'll briefly run over for the sake of time. Let's go. Uh, the thing about liberty. Uh, that the celebration of Halloween is a thing of liberty for Christians. And he quoted a few references of Paul, one in Romans, another in 1 Corinthians, I believe he said 8 and 9. Yes. Well, here's what the Bible says. This is the same Apostle Paul that they quoted. Here's what he said about liberty in Come Galatians 5.13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. So, yes. We as believers in Christ, whether you call yourself an Israelite, a Christian, so on and so forth, we do have liberty in Christ. But that liberty is not to be used as an occasion to the flesh, but to serve one another in the spirit of Christ. So the question is, how was Halloween serving one another in the spirit of Christ? That's the question. All right. How can someone, how can someone be serving the Most High in spirit and in truth? On Halloween how can you do that and 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 you know move that over to uh, or try to show that that's something good mm. for Christians mm. what can you pull out of Halloween that's good mm. and say well listen well I'm doing this because God would have liked us to do this I'm doing this with the children because the Bible says it's good to do this any place at all Go on. Mm -hmm. One more thing I'll, I'll mention as far as the, the costumes. They mentioned the costumes as something yes. uh, innocent for children. Well, the history on the costumes is that, as I think one of the, the Muslim guys mentioned, yeah. was that it was supposed to scare away evil spirits or scare away others who look to do harm unto you. Okay. But Christ stated, and the Christians should know this, Christ stated that Satan cannot cast out Satan. Now, what does this have to do with a costume? Uh, an evil demonic costume cannot scare away a demon or an evil demonic costume cannot protect you from an evil demon. Only the spirit of Christ can protect you from an evil demon. And I'm going to read this here in the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 24. Come on. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow doeth not cast out devils, but by the spirit or but by, by Beelzebub, the prince of devils. And Yeshua knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Come on. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then shall his kingdom stand? So you cannot use evil to cast out evil. Exactly. And on top of that, the Most High uh, revealed this through Christ, mm. that what? He never gave believers in Christ the spirit of fear. Mm. Mm. Okay? We don't fear spirits. So nix the costumes and anything else that comes with it. These are evil superstitions that relegate us into a cult thinking. Mm. Okay? Either we're walking in light or in darkness. And that's, that's where we're going in a moment. To show clearly... That Christians are teaching that it's okay to be lukewarm or even hot <laughs> mm. and still be accepted with the most high God in Christ. Okay? If I if I if I didn't know any better, brothers and sisters, I would believe these people were actually Satanists disguised as Christians. And mm. we're gonna go there in a moment. Right? Mm. I need you to go to 1 Corinthians 10 and 20 for me real mm -hmm. quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20. Read it. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice. The things which the Goyim sacrifice, because Goyim is the word that the Jewish guy uh, stated. But in the Bible, it's Gentiles. This is what the Jews are saying about you people. You other nations. The people that are non-Jews. When you don't follow the laws of God, you're looked upon as nothing. Hmm. To them. Because a man of God, a man of Christ would be what? A man or woman of law. Of judgment. 
of righteousness. And one cannot know righteousness except they what? Know the law. And the Jewish people know this. Read, the things the Gentiles sacrifice, read. They sacrifice to devils. They sacrifice to devils. See? That's why people are celebrating Halloween this evening. Christians are allowing their children to dress up like goblins and, 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 and ghosts and vampires and the great and, 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 and dead uh, and, and, and the walking dead and all that. We're giving our children over the devils. See? This is Paul's writings. Paul never said give, give Christians or those that believe in Christ liberty to serve Satan on Satan's day. A day that celebrated throughout history where the living connect with the dead. You, you, don't, have, you don't get liberty for that. Read. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. The Bible. Okay. That means on Christmas you can't dress up as Jesus Christ. If you think no matter what color you think he is. You can't use Christ, so, so that garbage he's claiming, as long as it's nothing bad or evil or, or, or dark. You can't even dress up like Christ if you wanted to on this day. It's evil. The Bible tells you, woe to them that calls good evil and evil good. And Christians will not take a stance on anything. That's why so many, so many of us in this world who, who grew up as Christians are people have turned to Satan, have fallen, because Christians won't take a stance, a hard stance on anything. And I'm speaking of the Christian authority. Why? You're going to find, brothers and sisters, believe it or not, they are with the agenda of Satan. They are one and the same with the agenda. We're going to go there in a moment. I know you're waiting, guys. I'm going to pull you in in a moment. Read. 1 Corinthians 10, 21. Come on. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Read it again. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. This is the New Testament, folks. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Read. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table. You can't say you're down with Christ. And of the table of devils. And then send your children out on Halloween. Or you know, for the sake of safety, open up your church pews and church doors to have a haunted house or candy in a church and say that, well, we're going to turn something evil good in the name of Christ. There's no compromise of the truth. What's truth if, it's, if it can be compromised? It's no longer truth. And Christianity have turned everything into a lie, folks. It's the authority of Christianity. They have compromised with pagans to the point where there's nothing left. Righteous. And then they'll come and look at Israelites and say, well, listen, or oh, y'all judging people. You're judging people. Uh, the law, we're not under Moses. Well, listen, okay. Just say you're not under Moses. You think that Christ would allow or would sanction our children celebrating Halloween? So don't try to claim that it's under Moses, you know, you know, that forbid these act activities, which were known as evil, wicked and occult in the Old Testament. And even in the New Testament, we're reading out of Corinthians. Read. Verse 22. Come on. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Are we stronger than the Most High? Read. Verse 23. All things are lawful for me, but not. But all things are not expedient. So he's making it clear. All things are lawful for him, but all things are not expedient. Okay. He understands where this lib liberty is. But even the places of liberty, he's careful. Hmm. <laughs> you understand? But there's certain things that will never be compromised in the epistles. Okay? We cannot compromise the integrity of God's law, which Christ came to fulfill. 
We cannot compromise that. You cannot have our children dabbling in the occult, having them as open prey for Satanists, kidnappers, child sacrifices in this day in which the parents, the parents today cannot keep, a, keep the eye on the eyes on their children like, like we used to traditionally in the past. Less and less do our parents have time to actually find out what our children are doing. The majority of, uh, of the homes are single parent homes. Majority, uh, the mother at the home with no father. And then she have to work. So our children are open prey for the occult, brothers and sisters, the occult world. I have some statistics. Statistics I'm going to go over in a moment. Mm -hmm. Elder Lawyer, what else you have there before I bring uh, Gaja in? Mm -hmm. uh, just one more scripture. Come uh, on. St. John chapter 10. Let me pull it up here. Come on. Since we are speaking about a day of death, yeah. as we read in the article. Yes. Okay, St. John chapter 10. In fact, uh, John 10 and 13. Let me grab it real quick. Uh, let me grab Gabar also. I'm grabbing you in, Gabar. All right. I'm bringing you in. In fact, I'll come back to this one here. You can, you can, you can go ahead. I'll okay. Come back to this point. So, for those who've just come in, Gabar, you there? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Now, for those who've just come in, okay. Of course, we're we're here this evening broadcasting live live on so-called Halloween. Christians tempting God on Halloween. Have Christians all together turned away from God, celebrating known pagan, wicked, satanic holidays, such as Halloween, let alone uh, Sunday worship, as well as Easter and Christmas. Come to find out, you can put all of these in the same basket. Does it even matter to God if we allow our children to partake in this this evening? Well, guess what? We have some information for you. Even testimony from a witch that's going to give you some insight of what really happens on nights like tonight. Okay? Now, I know you're there, um, Elder Gabar. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up since you're here. I would like to say shalom, my brother. Glad to have you. And uh, I, I have to make a few announcements. I'm going to I'm going to make a few announcements in a moment, but first... What I'll do is, as a matter of fact, let's make our announcements now, and then I'm going to bring Gaja in, then you in, okay? Real quick. And for those that are on Blog Talk, the call-in number is 515-605-9327. It's going to shock you this evening what we've exposed, uh, what we found out and researched concerning our children. The majority of children you see gone missing, we have FBI statistics to show you that this is the night. This is the night in which they're prepping your child to be sacrificed or be initiated into, a, into the occult in the future, folks. Okay? Now, are Christians actually exposing our children to Satanists is a question. By allowing their children to celebrate Halloween. Warn everyone you know, okay? Warn everyone you know, especially those who believe in the Bible, that Christians everywhere could be tempting the same God they claim they're serving, okay? Real quick, I need you to make some announcements for me, uh, Elder Lawyer. Mm -hmm. And right after the announcements, we're going to bring in Elder Gaja, Okay? And uh, we have some more video mm -hmm. live here on Blog Talk this evening. Before I go, uh, let me go take a break real mm -hmm. quick. Yep. Before I do that, let me mention the fact that, brothers and sisters, I will be in Texas. Okay, I'll be in Dallas tomorrow. We will be in Dallas tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And to celebrate uh, Friday night with our Dallas congregation. And then after that, we'll celebrate the next day, Shalom, with our 
with the Houston congregations. All, all praises be to the Most High. Ahaya Bashim Yishai will rewap. And uh, we have Elder Gabar, uh, we, we, uh, who just got back from Chicago. Uh, we have a new church set up there in Chicago. And I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Elder Gabar, you'll be there in Chicago December 10th, correct? Uh, yes, sir. December 10th, I'll be there. Uh, well, November. November 10th. Uh, uh, November 10th. Correct me. Yeah, Thank no, you. I appreciate no, it. No, yeah, November 10th, uh, two weeks from now. Not this weekend, but the following weekend. Okay, November 10th. Thanks for correcting me. November 10th, Elder uh, uh, Gabara will be in Chicago. We have a new building there. All praises be the most high. Ahaya Bashim Yashaya will rewalk. So if you are in this, the Chicago area and used to gather with us in Chicago, hey, send us an email uh, to gather it as one at AOL.com and be a part of the gathering we have in Chicago. Okay. And of course, we have Elder Gaja in the house. Him and Elder Yarak, you're in California, right? You both? Yes, sir. All right, all right, all right. How's it going there? Um, it's good, man. Um, I mean, it's really good. We met with the buddy last Sabbath, and you know, it's good turnout. Uh, we're trying to find a permanent uh, spot together. Okay. We went over to Las Vegas, met up with our, our brothers over there, uh, Deacon Balas and um, Bakar. You know, really good brothers over there holding it down. You know, it's a blessing meeting the people over there. And um, our next destination is Washington for this Sabbath. Okay. But, but talking about Halloween, I want to rewind it here back into California. I mean, when we came here um, last week, we thought it was already Halloween going through the streets mm. here. It's like this witchcraft over here is celebrated on a daily with this whole Hollywood business. Mm. You understand? It's it's highly, you know, you, you, you sign boards, the people on the street look possessed. And I'm not saying it, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not telling you something that, you know, I'm, I'm exaggerating. You're literally passing people on the street that, that are possessed. And it's, and it's become a normality. Meaning people, people aren't, you know, one time gone, I remember if you saw somebody acting out of, you know, acting strange, it would be a spectacle. But here it's not. It's normal. It's a normality for, mm. for for to see people bugging out. You understand? Mm. And you know this this Halloween. It's like, funny because um, you know, uh, this morning I was up early talking to my children over in the UK, and um, you know, I wanted them in the house early. I wanted them, you know, at, at you know, I told Lorian make sure that they don't go out. Make sure you know she, they're with her all the time. You with me? Yes. Because it's serious. These, you know, this is a really highly demonic time where these predators prey on our children. Mm. And and like you said, the stats don't lie, and they've known this. But the Christian church, let me tell you, man, the Christian church is, you know, we, we, we need to we, we need to take out the name Christ out of that and just call it what it is. You with me? It's Satan's church. Yes, that's what it is. It's Satan's church. It's Lucifer's, it's Lucifer's hub. You with me? It's his hub. It's where his ministers are. Let me read, let me read something here for you um, real quick. Go on. You don't mind. I'm in the book of 2 Corinthians. I'm in 2 Corinthians 11. And let me read something here so real quick. 2 Corinthians 11. And let me start at 13. Come on. And it says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. That was that brother you were you were playing earlier. These are these deceitful workers. These are the ones who are transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Exactly. So, so they, they come here and they act like it's nice and it's good and it's all just candy for the kids. Oh, so people are also, you know, why, why can't we have candy? Because it's satanic. The whole thing is that it's demonic to the highest degree, and we can't partake in these things anymore. You understand? It's like it's getting to a point right now where when these days coming up, we're supposed to be in the house, hunkered down. You with me? Waiting for this, waiting for the for the angel of death to pass. You understand? So, anyways, you know, let me. Just, let me on, not, on your let point, me uh, no, no, no. I'm gonna let. We're gonna talk on the other side. But one thing I wanted to point out is. I notice everyone everywhere, you notice I mention this almost every week, Elder, elder since we all on the line. Mm -hmm. 
that you have all these so-called pastors, black pastors, apologetics, all of them rallying the wagons against Israelites telling our people to follow the law of God. That that's the reason we went into captivity. That's the reason we are continually oppressed and exploited by the Gentiles. Come back to God's law and they can rally and set up web pages and YouTube pages attacking Israelites. But mm -hmm. I never seen them rally. Where's the TD Jakes uh, sermon against Halloween? Mm hmm. Where, where's the Creflo Dollar mm -hmm. sermon against Halloween? Where are the apologetics? Where's the apologetics? Uh, Vocab Malone. Who the other guy? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what's his name? White. James yeah. White or these other guys. Yeah. Where's your video against Christians celebrating Halloween? Mm -hmm. But they can all rally together and say, don't keep the law, don't keep the law. But on the other hand, say, tell our children, you have liberty to sin on Halloween. Mm -hmm. It's why do you think brothers and sisters, it's called a holy day or holiday. Wise are synonymous with I it's a high holy day tonight for Satanist folks. Mm -hmm. It's a high holy day. The same way we have Passover mm -hmm. feast of unleavened bread, Sabbath. This is Satan's Sabbath tonight. And you would think that they would rally together and say, once and for all, let's take a stand as Christians with Christ against Satan's day. But, mm -hmm. they'll, but they'll focus on Israelites teaching that our people need to co should come back to the law. Mm -hmm. Now, just hold on to that for a second. I need you to do the announcements real quick. Mm -hmm. We're only going to do an announcements Rick, real quick, five minutes and jump right back in. But brothers and sisters, I want to put it, put this out there. <laughs> if you're not in this Hebrew and Bible Academy, you are missing out, brothers and sisters. I'm going to tell you that right now. We are going all the way in, breaking these scriptures down on a scholarly level, giving you understanding on how to deal with the precepts and understand your Bible through this Hebrew and Bible Academy. Now, of course, just like tonight, we're putting out a lot of information that that's constructive and helpful for our people worldwide. But there's nothing like sitting down with us on the first day of the week for study. We don't use Sunday as a holy day. Sunday is a study day in which we delve into the Bible and deal with these precepts and and teach our people. OK, the fundamental foundation on how you can study the show thyself approved and do what? sustain with a foundation that you can only get through this academy so that you're not so that you're not tossed to and fro all over the place so yes we have our sabbath services we have our weekly broadcast all praises be to the most high we're here with you through all adversity on wednesdays like we are tonight giving key information but brothers and sisters in order for you to stand and not be wavered with a foundation you need to be a part of this academy while the Most High is still giving us an opportunity to come together with it. Learn your book. And there's nothing like this anywhere, any place on the earth right now, where you can come in and learn this book the way you need to. You can send an email, especially for those who don't have a place to gather. Even if you have a place to gather, if elders and deacons, everyone should be in this academy because key, key information come out every week. That's right. Every week, key information comes out. OK, that wasn't taught prior every week. Send your email gathering as one at AOL.com. That's the number one at AOL.com. Be a part of this academy while the Lord is still the most high and Christ is still allowing us to do this. <laughs> because why? It's effective. And many of our brothers and sisters are building their foundation in this with this walk using the Hebrew and Bible Academy. You can go to HistoryTimes.org. Or you can go to gatheringofchrist.org, hit on the tab, participate, okay? Our next academy will begin December 23rd, and you want to get in with the early enrollments. Okay, we're coming up on week eight, in which we're going to be actually going into Islam and Judaism on an entirely different level. We're going to be showing you what the Sephardic Jews are, what the Ashkenazi Jews are, 
You understand? We're giving you the different factions of Judaism and show you how Ishmael and Esau together conspired to set up religions. Christianity, Islam, as well as Judaism, knowing that the children of God in the last days would be in their hands. They set up these religions to do what? You got it. To eventually convert us, to keep us under their craft through religion. We're going to go into that this coming Sunday. Okay? You don't want to miss this. <laughs> what is the origin? You believe that when you're celebrating Passover, when you're celebrating certain holy days and going to Jewish calendars, that you're actually celebrating the Passover in the Bible. Come to find out, you might as well be celebrating Christmas if you're celebrating the Passover with, Jew with the Jewish people. You might as well be celebrating Halloween. We're going to show you how they purposely, they purposely distorted the time so that we can celebrate the days, pagan Gentile days, but yet label them holy days using Torah. The Jewish people have deceived us too and had us believe that they, having us believe in the whole time that they were celebrating uh, Passover when they weren't. We're going into that. This coming Sunday, you don't want to miss it. Uh, I need you to finish the announcements, mm -hmm. and then we're going to jump right back in with the deception, the deceptive covering Christians are using to cover Halloween. Mm -hmm. All right. Real quick with the announcements. First and foremost, we are very excited to announce the formation of our new worldwide headquarters location for the gathering of Christ Church in Philadelphia, PA. This is exciting times for us and the Most High has put the spirit on us to help finish this work strong and having a headquarters location will help us direct the flock more efficiently. We expect open and operating on the first Sabbath of January 2019. If you would like to support the renovation work soon to begin at our new location, please send an email to gathering as one that's the number one at AOL.com or visit us at gatheringofchrist.org and click the donation button and indicate it's for the HQ renovation. So it's applied pro appropriately. We thank you all in advance for helping support the work and may the most high bless you all or bless all of your efforts. The next announcement is for the Hebrew and Bible Academy. We would like to invite you all to enroll in the next Hebrew and Bible Academy that starts on Sunday, December 23rd, 2018. We are happy to announce that we will be adding never before taught lessons in the coming Academy as well. To enroll, please go to historytimes.org or send us an email at gathering as one. Again, that's the number one at AOL.com for I am apparel. For those that might not know, I Am Apparel Store is a new clothing line created by Elder Gabar to meet our unique clothing style and is available to everyone. For years, we've had the vision to empower our people and to nurture self-sufficiency self as a body, a church, and a community. The I Am Apparel Store is a continuation of that goal to facilitate self-reliance as a nation and creatively design styles that are just for you. Join us in our endeavors to build and grow our nation by visiting us at IamApparelStore.org today. Again, that's IamApparelStore.org. Last but not least, for those who would like to donate to the work, if you would like to make donations to support the work and the elders travels to different areas, please go to GatheringOfChrist.org or send an email to gathering as one the number one at AOL.com. We thank you all for your support. Okay. Okay, you, you've done the announcements? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to have a new headquarters here. <laughs> it's going to be nice. It's all praises be to the most high. We're doing the work, and the work cannot get done without you all. All right. Elder Gabar, I got a witch I'm about to bring on, an ex-witch we're about to bring on through video. Before we do that, let me welcome to the panel this evening, Elder Gabar, the Elder of New York. How are you, sir? 
Shalom, Elder. Shalom, shalom. It's a uh, very uh, interesting uh, show we have it today. All right. You know, oh, yeah, so, so it's, it's powerful. So, you know, uh, on the spirit of uh, Elder Lawyer, some announcements. They just means, you know, do some announcement in regards of what, you know, uh, where I'm going to be traveling in the next few months. So, okay. uh, as everybody know, I'm going to be in uh, Chicago, Illinois on the 10th. But I'm going to be in um, Cincinnati, Ohio on the 17th of November. Um, so those brothers that are in uh, the Cincinnati, Ohio area, uh, I'll be there on the 17th. Now, the reason why I, uh, I'm doing this Cincinnati, Ohio trip is because when I went to Chicago, Illinois, uh, there were many brothers that came from... Um, the, the state between, what is that state? Uh, not Alabama, uh, Indiana. So, you know, you got Chicago, Illinois, or Illinois, and you got Indiana, and then you got uh, Ohio. So a lot of brothers and sisters came from the Indiana era. So I know there's a lot of brothers there and sisters that are Indiana, Indiana, and there's no leadership there right now. So I would like to have a meeting with everybody from Indiana because we have a, a decent group of people that go to the from the Indiana, Indiana uh, state to the Cincinnati, Ohio congregation. So I would like to meet with everybody, kill two birds with one stone, so to speak, we meet with the Cincinnati, Ohio congregation, and also meet with the uh, Indiana congregation and people that have been baptized under uh, the Chicago body when uh, Lamala Ha was there. So there's a little bit of, uh, you know, conf not, I would say confusion, but that uh, some people are lukewarm they don't know where to go or what to do and what's going on with the Indiana. Okay. We're gonna set up a uh, uh, we're gonna set up a a mission or a plan, a game plan for the Indiana uh, congregation of people there. Uh, we have a good about fifty to sixty people that do fellowship and, 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 and they're scattered. So I would like to meet them in the Cincinnati, Ohio. This Friday, Elder Lawyer usually does a online class on Friday. I know he's gonna be with your elder uh, Ricard on in, in Texas. So I'm gonna be conducting that meeting on Friday to discuss with the people that are in Indiana, going forward, what we're gonna be doing, and Excellent. also the people, and meeting with the people in Chicago. Also, elder lawyer also mentioned that uh, there's people in Kentucky that sometimes are, there's no leadership there right now, but they do drive to the Cincinnati. I would like to meet with them, yeah. although that's not, my region, that's Elder Lawyer's region, but we went, uh, Elder Lawyer and I, we've been working together, and we're also going to discuss with them what is the game plan for Kentucky in the near future. So I want to make that announcement. Okay, great. And uh, I want to yeah, put, I want, thank you, Elder, Elder Gabar. Okay. And, and, and one other announcement, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead take we, your time. Go, ahead, go, just, go through just, them all. Just to, just to uh, uh, make another announcement, next week radio show, uh, uh, is confirmed. Okay. Uh, Leah Helm, Leah uh, uh, Wills, uh, the journalist who's doing the documentary uh, called "Trap in the Culture," Come on. based on molestation in the Black and Latino community, and, and she specifically is uh, addressing the molestation allegation against Africa Bambada of the Zulu Nation. Oh. She's it, she's been working hard behind the scenes to try to make sure that this. Uh, documentary is, is, is sees the light and day and she's in the in almost towards the end of that so uh she's going to be coming in next wednesday at 7 30 mm -hmm. uh, and, and doing an interview with uh the elders of the getting christ church sharing light into the, the you know this uh tragedy within a black and latino community so-called dealing with molestation so uh, i also wanted to make you know make that announcement oh man what a blessing you know what it, it, that's one of the most hidden sinister I would, saw, I would say epidemics within our community, mm. the child molestation and what's really going on with our children. You'll be shocked to know how many of our children are actually violated within our communities on a regular. One of the most yeah. hid, hidden evils that germinate and materialize within our community. And what's, what, what's, what, what I would say is even more wicked about this, the spirit is so oppressive that an adult still fears be it male or female they still feel they, they still fear the spirit of that predator even as an adult mm -hmm. 
and, 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 and censor themselves, protect the predator. Part of that abuse, that demon that comes with abuse, the child grows and, and, and protect the adult that have victimized him or her. You understand? Yeah. And if it's and if you've been victimized, you can almost bet your bottom dollar 10, 20, 30 other children are, are dealing with that same broken spirit within our community, breaking other people because they have never had an opportunity to actually have a platform to talk about what actually happened to them. So guess what? Next week, we're going to deal with that. And eventually uh, we're going to have a town meeting in New York. Right. Gabar to talk about child molestation in our communities? Uh, yes, absolutely. You know, because the, okay. the, the tragic is, you know, we're going to have it in, in, in the church and we, we're going to work on a date when it won't be the best time. Yes. We're going to have, uh, we're, we're going to invite survivors. We're going to invite uh, experts. Uh, we're going to invite people that are fighting uh, in the political arena and trying to pass this law or change this law because as in New York, uh, it's the, one of the most outdated laws in dealing with child molestation. Uh, you only allow to child or to, to charge a person or to file a claim five years after your 18th birthday, okay. which is uh, 20, 23 years old. So we have some people within the community trying to change those laws. So we're going to have people with law enforcement, people from, from all over the world to try to, you know, uh, get statistics, you know, okay. things of that nature. You know, because it's, it's, it's so scary because within, within the statistic that says it's one out of uh, three or one out of four, depending on what statute with, 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 with young girls. But within young boys, because young boys actually, they will hold it to their grave. They don't, they, the many of the statistics that's out there is only uh, assumption because they don't know. Most boys do not report this. Yeah. They report it less than even girls. And, and see, things that you know what's, shame, yeah. and what's a shame about that, and we're going to talk about that next week, Abar, is that the predators know that the young boys right. rarely say anything. They, yeah. hold, they hold that victim, that child victim, even until up until adulthood. We're going to discuss that. We're going to talk about that. I don't want to put too much out there, but yeah, the, the, the predators know they're victims. They know that the, they'll be protected by that child they're victimized. They know the child would grow. And, and, and you know, a, man, a male have testosterone, right? We don't. What what man want to admit that another man violated them? And predators know this. Yeah. So it's upon the men, men of the Most High, with this Bible. It's upon us to stand and say, well, listen, we don't believe that the so-called black community did did rightful service for those children that was raped and de destroyed by the likes of Malachi York and others. How was it these guys are still able to survive in our community after raping and destroying our children? Yeah. Okay. So n n we're not going to say what that says about the children or what's, what does that say about the men within our communities to allow our children to be continually raped by these male predators? We're going to talk about that next week. Okay. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, brother. Now jumping right in Christians, Tempting God on Halloween, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. You have something there? Uh, no, sir. Before, before we do anything, here's a testimony of an ex-witch, a woman that was once dealing... Let's get him out of here. A woman who was once a part of a witch coven... A pagan who actually dealt with child sacrifice and rituals. Listen to this. Beth, am, and I am a former... Hold up now. I want everyone to hear this. Okay, here we go. An ex-witch. I am a former pagan or witch, and now a born-again believer or Christian, as of about a year and a half ago. Um, I have spent quite a few years being involved in the occult or witchcraft. I can call myself a pagan. And um, you can also say Wiccan. Um, and, as, and I would like to share with you um, a little bit about what I experienced as a witch 
um, during Halloween and what I think it means to Christians. So when I was younger, um, I celebrated Samhain on October 31st, which is uh, Halloween. And for witches or pagans, uh, October 31st or Samhain, it's spelled S A M H A. Okay, so I pronounced it wrong. It's Samhain in pronunciation. Okay. Um, is a high holy day in it's, their wheel of the year. They have see that? Many- They're saying that according to this ex witch, it's mm-hmm. a high holy day. Now, you have Christians who have just said it's okay for children to dress up and all those things. As long as they don't deal with the airy, uh, uh, what you would call dark part of it, right? But listen to what this witch is saying. It's a high holy day for Satan. Sabbaths during the year, but October 31st is one of the very special high holy days. Uh, Witches say that that is the day where the veil is thinnest between the worlds. It is when they use it to perform rituals, to contact the dead, to talk to their ancestors, and um, they just basically celebrate death. So for witches or pagans, death is not something that they fear. It is something that um, is to be revered. It is part of the cycle of life. And um, most witches or pagans consider that when you die, you're either reincarnated or you go on to another realm, a spirit realm, Mm. where your spirit would live on, but your physical body would have passed away. Um, Now, mind you, that's what witches and warlocks believe, right? Mm -hmm. You got Israelites teaching that that, that reincarnation garbage. Mm -hmm. Now, we know the origin of that is because you had brothers in the past trying to claim to be some people they weren't. So in order to, to justify themselves as being great men that they claim of the Old Testament, they began to teach a satanic doctrine such as reincarnation, which we know is rooted in straight evil. Christ, it tells us in in Hebrews 9 and 27, is committed unto man once to die and then the judgment. Only Satan would make a man believe you got a hundred chances so that you can waste the chance of life, which is precious, the one you're living now. And so on October 31st, I have done uh, these rituals and spells to contact the dead. And it is very real. Um, now, listen, she says it's very real. That means she has contacted the dead, lawyer. Mm. You are entering into a state where you are affecting the spiritual world. You're becoming a part um, of a spiritual realm that you cannot see with your eyes, but is there. And um, the intent is not... Now, to- wouldn't a Christian warn children of this? Instead of excusing Halloween for candy? Shouldn't you at least give the parents an opportunity to know what your child could be dubbing in? Knocking on a witch's door or a warlock's door that night for some candy? Harm or be negative, but I, I do believe that it is actually demonic without witches or pagans knowing. Um, when I did it, I had, I had no idea what I was really doing. It was just, it was what you do. As a mm. witch, you, your high holy days and your cycle of the year and your wheel of life, they're, they're just what you go around and, and that and the goddess. And it's just so October 31st is a huge celebration. It's also the Celtic New Year. And so it's it's a big celebration and preparing into winter solstice or Yule. So as a new believer, um, I was very convicted by God that I should not celebrate October 31st, Halloween. Um, I, When I was younger, I was very into um, celebrating the Sabbaths as a witch, but as I got older and I had kids, I moved more into celebrating the traditional holidays, Halloween and Christmas and Easter. Mm. But I always, you know, in my heart and my mind, I was celebrating Samhain and winter solstice because that was what I felt was true and right. And I just wanted to have my kids have more of a normal uh, growing up, so to speak. So 
We just did what I did when I was growing up in Christmas and Halloween. So God convicted me very strongly that I should not celebrate Halloween. And um, I really just want to talk a little bit about that. I feel that um, to celebrate Halloween as a Christian is to really um, enter into ways of the world that we were not meant to do. God has told us, I am holy, and so I want you to be holy. He's told us that he set us apart. We are a special people. And when we began to start practicing in the ways of the world and paganism, then we're entering into uh, that darkness, that dark spiritual realm that is around us that is unseen, but it is very real. And it looks very innocent and fun as we dress our kids up in costumes and just go trick-or-treating but unfortunately october 31st is a day where so much evil is being practiced that even though we are not trying to participate and have no evil intent we we actually are being involved and participating in the evil going around and i know it's very hard to understand that as someone who's never experienced that dark realm, that other side, that um, dark spiritual force or world that's actually right around us. But um, it's very real. And if you think about um, stories in the Bible, even um, Daniel, when Daniel is standing, I believe he's standing by the river and the Archangel Michael, I believe it was, comes and tells us, I'm sorry, I've heard your prayers, but uh, I was fighting a battle and I wasn't able to get here. I mean, there's stories just like that. So about the Prince of Persia, the spiritual realm is real and it's dangerous. And in order to um, protect ourselves from entering into unintentionally, uh, this evilness and this this otherworldliness that is around us, um, to not show the demons, you know, that are out gallivanting around, and especially on that night, but they're out there anyway, that we are set apart and holy, that we have reverence for our God, then I believe with, you know, all my heart that, our God, our Lord and Savior, does not want us to participate in this. Now, I have no judgment for Christians or anyone that, that celebrates Halloween because I understand that coming, I've been there, I've been where you are, and um, it's, it seems like it's all fun. But unfortunately, there's a lot of things that seem like they're fun and we don't know the other side of it. So I just wanted to share a little bit of that information with you. And now, what, what I, this is what I want to bring out here. Now, it's good that she's given her opinion based on experience. But the sad piece about this, brothers and sisters, is that Christians never had an opportunity to understand what she understands. It's fortunate you understand that they didn't dove into it the way her growing up a witch and all that. But it's unfortunate that they don't know what their children are doving into as far as the dark side. At least when she became a Christian, she had enough to weigh and understand good from evil and make a conscious choice. Mm -hmm. Christians don't have that. They don't have their pastors laying it all out and saying, well, this is what Halloween is on the surface. This is what it was, was from the beginning, and it cannot be colored good. It cannot be made good. It was evil from its inception, and it's still evil. And there's ways Christians can show this. You can show uh, the interaction the disciples had with the magician Simon Mangus. The dark side. When 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 Simon Mangus tried to buy the Holy Spirit and he was a source, he was a wit, he was a sorcerer. See, you can show the Old Testament and show the laws 
that was given to the righteous, the children of Israel. Let me read a few real quick. And then I'll open it back up for the elders if they would like. Let's read a few. Mm -hmm. This is Leviticus chapter 20, verse 26. And, and see, this is what I don't understand when the Christians are talking about you're not under the law. You'd rather be under Satan? The law is good, brothers and sisters. It's good because you don't know evil except you had knowledge of the law. So you need the law in your conscience to weigh good from evil. Why? Because the majority of things we were taught in this world, we believe is relative and it's, it's okay. But we were shaped in iniquity. We were shaped in sin. So the law give us knowledge of that sin now to have. And as you grow in Christ and grow in the Bible, you realize this and say, okay, I was shaped in iniquity. I don't have the conscience to discern good from evil because the things I was taught uh, that I thought was good, I learned to be evil. So now, where's my schoolmaster? I need a foundation. I need to know according to God whether or not my practices and the things I've been taught to excuse, I need to know if they were right or wrong. Let's start with Halloween. What about witches, warlocks, goblins? Chapter and verse, read it, Elder Lawyer. Leviticus 20 and 26 to 27. Read. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I am the Lord, for I the Lord am holy. Come on. And have severed you from other people that ye should be mine. I have separated you from other people that we should, that we should be his. There's only two masters, brothers and sisters. Anyone that's telling you there's an in-between place, a comfortable in-between place of liberty, have been sent from hell. Christ says, be the hot or cold or spewed out. Only Satanists can play the middle ground. Okay, not the righteous. That means there, there's definitive action or decisions on each, each thing concerning law. There's definitive. That's why Christ, that's why Christ stated, let your yea be yea or your nay be nay. Anything else, gender evil and strife. So all these in-between answers you get from a Christian is evil. It's either right or wrong, Christian. Read. Verse 27. A man also or woman that hath a familiar spirit. A familiar spirit. That's doing what? A medium which deals with the dead. Who opens themselves up for the dead. Like this repentant, this woman who was one, once a witch used to do that means like today tonight is a night brothers and sisters in which the living knowingly connects with the dead like pagans witches like those that are that, that are at the helm or the authority of the christian churches like your roman catholics like your pagan authorities like the lutheran like the mormons the jehovah witnesses all of their authority right now have mediums that are connected with the underworld. All of them. Come on. A man or a man also or woman that hath a familiar spirit or that is a wizard shall surely be put to death. The Bible is clear concerning this. You're not supposed to celebrate a wizard. And it so happened that the Jew was talking about earlier. Well, it's not kosher for us to do it, but is for you goyim but yet doing the research we realize that judaism is witchcraft at its core and part of their witchcraft is what their deceptive tongue them speaking on either side of their face when what when they created the movie which initiated many of this generation into the occult harry potter you had something on that uh, mm -hmm. earlier, Elder Lawyer, right? Yes, sir. They yes, try sir. to claim Jews don't deal with Halloween. When they benefit financially on Halloween more than any other race, any other people on earth, they, they, they are the children of Halloween. They're Satan's children, folks. Who, who came up with Harry Potter, Elder Lawyer? 
Right. Now, as far as the film series, the director for all eight installments of the film series is named David Heyman. David Heyman, a Jew. Mm hmm. It says in 1999, he secured the film rights to the Harry Potter film series and went to produce all eight installment installments becoming the most important member of the crew to be involved in all the films. Now, here's the history of him. Heyman was born in London. He is the son of John Heyman, producer of the films The Go-Between and Jesus, and Norma Heyman, an actress and Academy Award-nominated producer for the films Dangerous Liaisons and Mrs. Henderson's Presence. His paternal grandparents were German Jews, who left Nazi Germany and immigrated to England prior to World War II. Look at that. Uh, claim they don't celebrate uh, uh, Halloween. Who more so benefit financially from these holy days than the Jewish powers, the synagogue of Satan, named by Christ himself? Those which claim they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan, speaking off of either sides of their face, faces. Who's benefiting from Halloween? Who's the warlocks, the witches, the sorcerers? Folks, these people are not upholding Torah. Why? Because the Bible says a witch or a warlock should be put to death, not celebrated as Harry Potter. Then they rolled in this witch to write books, children's stories, so it can more so do what? Fascinate the youth into the occult. Started writing children books where children were lying around the corner for witchcraft, sorcery, mm -hmm. evil, and wickedness. But there's a reason why Christians can't make a definitive statement as an authority against what? Halloween, why? They've compromised everything else. Because if they take a stance on Halloween, then guess what? A pagan going to stand up like they did on our radio show and ask, well, what about Christmas then? If you're going to stand against Halloween, then where's your stance against Christmas? Because that was pagan too. That's just as evil as Halloween. What's your stance on Sunday worship, which was the worship of the sun first day of the week in total defiance of the Lord's Sabbath in the same Bible you claim to uphold. <laughs> See, that's why Christians dance, dance around the question of whether or not it's right or wrong, because they know if they took a stance against Halloween publicly, then they would have to give an account to why they're dealing with other pagan days. Now check that out. Give me some more out of the Bible, other lawyer. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10, down to verse 12. Come on. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth div divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. Come on. Or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits. Or a consulter of familiar spirits. This is the Bible here. Come on. Oh no, or, brother! No, brother! I, no, brother! I'm under grace. Or a charmer. I'm, I'm under grace. Or a consulter with familiar spirits. What? I, I'm under liberty. Or a wizard. Or a necromancer. Or a necromancer. I'm under grace. <coughs> you see, you see the garbage they use Christ to excuse in Christianity. Yeah, the black guy sitting there. The first video, I, the first piece I, I pulled up, mm -hmm. and say, well. Doesn't it fall under liberty? He, he's, mm. he's representing the black guy for their fluff Christian deceptive piece. Uh, well, what about, does it fall under liberty? Mm. You see how, how, what they trying to use Christ for? Christ's blood wasn't sacrificed for us to sit on purpose and to put our children at jeopardy. In jeopardy with the occult. You don't know what doors we're opening up here for our children and wonder why this, th this generation have gone to hell. No one has taken a righteous stance as an authority within Christianity. Why? Because Christianity was compromised since the day those Romans destroyed our homeland, Jerusalem. 
They've been trying to compromise, compromise it every sense by introducing paganism and evil and covering it with biblical names. Mm -hmm. They only infiltrated it not to be a part of it, but to destroy what Christ began. In delivering his people. That was the whole point of Christianity, to infiltrate it. They couldn't stop the spirit from converting and gathering our people, so they infiltrated it through what? Christianity. Christ told us in Matthew 24 that many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. They will infiltrate using me. Come on now. Verse 12. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord thy God do have drive them out from before thee. And that's why we lost our homeland, brothers and sisters. That's, that's why we fell as a people, following the ways of the Gentiles. Bonfires, witchcraft, necromancy. Like last week we showed you, what? Black consciousness, uh, uh, black consciousness, black devils. Black, black magic, black devils. God talking about he's going to be having, having intercourse on that day to open up what? To open up some sex magic for these spirits that are coming out of hell. You wonder why we're so, we're so destitute as a people. Why the earth what, it, it, it is degrading. Why our people are in such a sick and fallen and deaf state. No one is standing for righteousness, righteousness folks. Not even those who claim to be Christians. So it's upon you sisters and you brothers who believe in Christ not to go to your pastors anymore and ask them why they're not celebrating it or why or, or ask them, well, why aren't you taking a stance on it? Stop asking them any questions. OK, if they don't want to stand against what's evil, walk away from them. They want to keep Sunday worship. They want to keep Easter. They want to keep Christmas. They want to keep Thanksgiving. They want to keep Halloween. Walk away. Phone calls real quick. Let me go through a few. I know we have a few more, but I don't want to mm -hmm. leave our brothers high and dry, brothers and sisters out there who are waiting. I know, I, I know they're salivating, lick, uh, lick, you know, chopping at the bit to get on. Mm. Okay. We're going to go. We're going to give you one minute per call because why? We only have about how many minutes? 28 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. We'll give you one minute per call. Be respectful to that time. We're going down the line, Brother Aharon, 757. Then after that, we have Brother V from Indiana, 219. I'm going right down the road, 724, Brother Josh, okay? Again, Christians are tempting God with Halloween. Let's go. Shalom, my brother. Shalom, elders. Shalom, elders. Bless you, brother. Shalom. Uh, Shalom. Hold, 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 hold on one second. Let me plug you in. Yeah. Okay. You. Okay. You good to go? All right. Excellent. Uh, yes. Uh, I just wanted to chime in real quick with um, something on even the trick or treat phrase. This is coming from a book called Spellbound, and I'll be brief. Um, trick or treat. The custom was created by druids. When they went to a home and demanded a child or a virgin for sacrifice, the victim was the druid's tree. Mm. In exchange, they would leave a jack-o'-lantern with a lighted candle made of human fat to prevent those inside from being killed by demons that night. When some unfortunate could not meet the demands of the druids, then it was time for the trick. This, a symbolic hex was drawn on the front door. That night, Satan or his demons will come and kill someone in that home. And that hex was so a six-pointed star. And that yes, hex yes, was a hexagram, yes, yes, which, is, six which is which is the I'm star of Moloch. Exactly, the six-pointed star. The Jewish star yes, that's sir. on the Jewish flags. Exactly. Yes sir. yes, sir. It looks just like the Jewish star. Just like it has the circle around it, it looks exactly like that blue star on that flag. And that's that's the symbol that the Jews drew. So you brothers are doing a beautiful job. I'm gonna leave it right there. Bless everyone listening. Thank you, elders. Bless you all. Shalom. Thank you, brother. And the Bible tells us, Woe to them that call good evil and evil good. You can't make anything good out of evil, folks. 
You see these Christians tap dancing around. Well, isn't it? Doesn't that fall under mm -hmm, liberty? Mm -hmm. Why? Because you know your child is, 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 you know, is dressed up like some vampire about to go knock on a, a Satanist door. And before before I go to the next phone call, I said I had some statistics real quick, right? Let me read some of these statistics for you, brothers and sisters, before I bring in the next call. And I'm, I'm going to go back and forth with this. I found something that showed statistics from the Truth Seeker Times in the early 2000s. Belfane, Easter, Passover, and Halloween, the months of kidnapping. Kidnappings. Protecting your children in the months of sacrifice. As you all know, the number of kidnapping missing persons in the U.S. gets in the 2,000 to 2,600 range per day, 90% of which are children. So I wanted to take a look at the stats to see if there was a correlation between satanic holy days and these disappearances. Since we know that the sacrifice people, especially the, know that the sacrifice of people, especially children, is prevalent. What I found, according to the FBI, that in 2007 through 2012, the highest numbers of kidnappings always occur in May. May 1st is the day it's known as Beltane, the worship of Baal, which starts the night of April 30th, kidnapping victims. Those missing victims would not be reported until May 1st or later, most likely explaining the high number reported in May. Not surprisingly, the number of victims varies by month, by month. Four months of the year always have the majority of the kidnappings, May, March, April, and October. Mm. These are the satanic holidays which have historically involved murdering children as part of their ritual. Easter, now look at that, the goddess of star, that's, that's worshipped during the sun solstice the first Sunday of the sun solstice under ancient Babylon. Easter, Halloween, Baltane, and unfortunately, the Jewish Passover. And I like to emphasize Jewish Passover because the real day of Passover is different than the Jewish Passover. Unfortunately, the majority of Israelites are following the synagogue of Satan for God's holy days in the Bible. These are the days of the highest sacrifices for our children. April as the month gathers so many victims because it is sometimes the month of which Easter falls and because it is a preparation month for Beltane, May 1st. But it also houses the Passover. In the, in the Kabbalistic tradition, killing a child and mixing its blood with the unleavened Passover bread is, a quite, is quite common. These are not Israelites doing this, it is their twisted twin brother who believes God demands a re-sacrifice of the children of Egypt during the Passover. Here's a number of kidnappings actually correlates with the placement of Easter in each year. In 2007, Easter was in April, in April. So the majority of the kidnappings occurred in March and indeed had more kidnappings in 2007 than April. It goes on and on and on. Then let's get down here to where it says, the reason there is such a wide range in the kidnapping period of Easter is because it is predicated by the 40-day Lent, which Catholics celebrate, which was a Babylonian 40-day worship in ancient Babylon. 40-day Lent period in which sacrifices are made to Talmuz, one for each year of his life. That's right. Now, when you go down to October, it says, October will always have a large number of kidnappings due to Halloween. It is a high Sabbath in witchcraft. We, have, we had a witch testify to that, well, an ex-witch mm -hmm. earlier, and draws a lot of attention in the world as a playful holiday for kids, despite the fact that most kidnappings that occur in October are to the end of sacrificing the victims on October 31st. Right? Now, as you go down here, and I'm going to make sure I pull this out, 
uh, in the academy on the news this weekend. But what I wanted to emphasize is when you see here, disappearances statistics links at the FBI, they got the links right here from 2007 2012 to show you the up and down ticks of the time for child sacrifice, which is right on during the ritual ritualistic times in which we're allowing our children, these Satanists to have access to an, an innumerable number of children, certain times of year. And that's why these particular days are more so aimed towards children. To get the children out so that these Satanists and child sacrifices would have easy access to children who don't have the regular protection as other families. Does this happen to all families? No. But these predators are so skillful at their craft, they know how to get to what? A child that doesn't have the same protection as, as someone with a, you know, with a normal protective family. And with Facebook and social media, it's easy for them to find their candidates well before the time. They'll know exactly whether or not a person have a father in the house, whether or not the mother work, all of that. In, this in the these times of social media, it's easy for them to find candidates to be sacrificed. Brothers and sisters, the statistics don't lie. And th these statistics I got, lawyer, was from the early 2000s, mm -hmm. before Facebook is, was what it is, right. before there was Snapchat, uh, Snapchat, Twitter, and guess what? Everyone has a phone. Even children are playing with phones right now, and Satanists are on the other end, folks. You have something to say on that? Yes, sir. I want to read something real quick concerning yes. Christ and the um, the precious nature that Christ or the the value that Christ had for children. Yes. It says here in the book of St. Matthew, chapter 18, verse uh, 2. And Yeshia called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, yeah. except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as a little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And who shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. Verse 6, key point. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones, which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, that, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Just showing that if you harm the children that belong to Christ, Christ will destroy you. For those who like to uh, abuse children around this time, those who like to harm children around this time, uh, those who would like to actually promote their children celebrating these types of uh, holy days or holidays around this time period. There's a price to pay. Exactly. And shouldn't Christians go the extra mile to protect our children this time of year instead of making it a festivity like it was in ancient Celt, ancient, ancient pagan times, Satanist times, when the Gentiles bear rule and we're, and we're looking to get our children? Mm -hmm. When you do the research for bonfires and to sacrifice our children to Moloch and all that, Shouldn't this be more so a protective time, a warning time by Christians opposed to a festive time? Think about that. Real quick. More calls. 201, Brother V from Indiana. Sh Shalom, you're live. Hey, how you doing, Elder? I'm blessed by the best. One minute, you're live on Block Talk. All right, I got a brief statement and a question. I was just agreeing with you that I believe some uh, supposed Christians are actually Satanists. And my question was, uh, was Pilate a Satanist? Because it says uh, in Luke 13 and 1, uh, that were present at that season, some that told him of Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. I was wondering about that. Was he like a warlock or something like, like that? Well, you have to realize that uh, pagans, Pilate was a pagan. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was a okay. pagan. Yeah, the Gen Romans were pagans. So what we're talking about, some of what we're speaking mm. of, that the God, that that our God, the God of Israel, forbid, was was a normal practice amongst mm -hmm. the Romans during Christ's time. Everything that we're talking about, that God forbids. 
the celebration of what they call Easter, mm -hmm. Christmas, Sunday worship, Halloween. Well, these were normal practice days and the rituals that I was talking about earlier, child sacrifice, that was normal amongst the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Wow. Okay. And I know that. So that's what that's what they mean when when it says season. That was one of their high holy days. What they were present. They were present at that season. Some of. Yeah, yeah. During that season, exactly. What chapter and verse? Give me the chapter oh, and verse, so we're not brother. misquoting that. Oh, uh, that's a uh, that's a. Uh, that's Luke 13, uh, chapter 13, verse 1. Let's get that real quick. Read that for mm -hmm. me. All right, brother, I'm going to put you on hold and I'll answer that uh, offline, okay? All right, peace. All right, thank you, my brother. Go on. What's that say? Uh, St. Luke chapter 13, verse 1. Read. They were present at that season, some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood, blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Yeshia answering said unto them. Exactly. That was a perfect example of heathenistic practices that were going on. Mingling blood with their sacrifices to their God. Yes. Which was a normal ritual of pagans. Okay. Now, great question. 724 area code. And we know the Romans were and are Edomites, modern day Europeans today. So it's no surprise that they celebrate these particular days and make an excuse for them. The Gentiles have always celebrated these pagan days. But we are the people that are accountable. We are God's people. There's accountability with us. When we begin to follow the way the Gentiles, we become slaves to them. Okay? The Gentiles have always disregarded the God of Israel. Okay? Let's make this clear. They've always did it. So the Most High tell us, listen, the things the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice the devil. So it's easy for them to get a church and excuse what their forefathers has always done. Okay? But our people cannot, can no longer fall victim to this. Okay, that's the point. Uh, 724 area code. Shalom, you're live on Blog Talk. Brother Josh. Shalom. How you doing? I'm blessed by the best and his, Shalom. Name, and his name is Ahaya. Let's do it. Con, I, I have a young man here. He's seven years old. He has what, a question he wants to ask you. Come on. How is Halloween bad? How Halloween is bad? Can you hear me? Yeah. Well, it's bad because... Uh, did, have your father ever taught you about Satan? No. Well, well. Yeah, that's. Oh, 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 no, no. That, well, well, he, oh, 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 okay. Well, he taught you about God, right? Yeah. Talk to me. He taught you about God, right? The, yeah, the, the, yeah. He, he, yeah. See, I'm, I'm his, I'm his stepfather. He, he and. He said, yeah, when you said, did his father ever teach you about it? He's, he must be thinking about it. Okay, his okay. I, I'm sorry. I didn't, I, no, but I, I didn't know. Let me speak to the young man. No, 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 no. That's, that's fine. Yeah, he's right here on the speaker phone. He can hear you. Okay, great. So, young man, your name? Let me have your name. I'm Tiana. Okay, great. How old are you? Seven. Seven. You know about God who created all of us, right? The good God, right? Yeah. By the way, his name is yeah. By the way, his name is Ahaya. Okay? Can you say that, Ahaya? I know that. Okay, great. Smart young man. Ahaya. Smart young man. Well, you know about Lucifer who was kicked out of heaven for being bad. And he deceived our yeah. mother, our father and mother, Adam and Eve, right? right? Yeah. Okay. Well, our God gave the Israelites laws, statutes, and commandments, good laws to follow, good holy days, right? And Satan have bad holy days. See? But he trick us with his bad holy days with candy. See? To try to make it good. 
So God gave us Sabbath. God gave us, Ahia gave us Passover. He gave us Feast of Unleavened Bread. All the days you can, we can actually read about in the Bible. Satan tricked us into Halloween. I have a Bible. Okay. Well, listen to this. Listen, listen, what you're saying. listen to this, young man. On this day, Satan's children, the bad ones, pray to the dead. They pray to spirits to come on earth to harm us, to come against us. And that's what make Halloween bad is because the bad demons and spirits are being used to attack us and to destroy our families and to hurt our mothers and fathers, our parents. So if you want candy, your mother and father or your stepfather can give you candy. But you don't need to be getting candy or celebrating on a day that's evil. You understand? Yeah. Yeah, Ahaya don't want that. And I know it sounds like fun because all the other children are doing it. But God, God will reward you for standing for truth. Okay? And for standing for what's right. And the mm -hmm. world, and let me tell you, the, the majority of the world that's doing this. They're not going to make it. If they don't change their ways, they're not going to make it. They're not going to have the real fun, which is the kingdom of heaven. That's the real fun. Not to do what everyone else is doing because God said, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. So just because it looks like fun, you don't want to have that type of fun. You want to have good fun. Passover, Sabbath, that's good fun. That's the fun that Christ partook in. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, yeah. And above all, it's wrong because God said, don't do it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Bless you. Bless thank you. you, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Bless you. And stay strong, young uh, man. And I had, a, I had a quick. Okay. Come on. He said, stay strong. Hey, I had a quick question. Uh, you said that uh, today is hollowed for Lucifer. And I was just wondering if, is his activity any different on tonight? Is he doing anything different than he normally does? And that's, that's it. Well, it's more so him being reverenced. The demons that you have to realize that spirits, even him, can only, uh, well, he only have the power that's relegated to him through us. See? So it's more so what we're doing. Absolutely. What, what we're doing in our participation with it is, get, is, is allowing these spirits to have power over us. That's what he's getting. He's getting the energy that should be going towards God. He's getting the prayer and the reverence that should be only going towards our God. OK, because any energy, any spirit, it, anything we participate with is given the demons he have power over. Power to attack us. You understand? Yes, absolutely. So, yes, you're asking, is he doing anything? And, different? Uh, it, it's what we're doing that's given him power. Mm -hmm. See. OK. All right. Yes, I, I do understand. Is he is he in hell or is, is he by himself somewhere? And then I'm I'm gonna hang up and you can answer that. No, is he uh, actually with the demons? No, br brother, he's on earth. He's on earth, okay. And he rule the powers, which okay. are the politicians of this earth. Uh, when Christ come, he'll be bound. But right now, he's ruling as the CEO all seeing eye of this earth. He's the prince of this world. Okay. Come on. All right. Bless you. I understand. Okay. And may the most uh, high, and may, may the most high damned him and the spirits under him to hell. Okay. We're speaking against him on his holy day. 
Okay? And we're talking about the real devil that the Bible speaks of. The fallen one. All right. More. Uh, Brother Ayathan from Florida. One minute. Talk to me. Yes, uh, Elder Ricard. That's me. Lawyer. Shalom. 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 Uh, yes, I just wanted to say that uh, I was, I'm here in uh, Jacksonville, Florida, and I was, uh, before I came to the truth, I was uh, associated with one of the mega church here in Jacksonville. Okay. And uh, can you name that mega church? The pastor there. Uh, hold, hold, up, hold, hold up! Hold up! Don't don't come on! Don't come on the our name, show talking about mega churches and 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 then you know don't name them. Who are they? Who they? Talk to me. Who okay. are they? Okay. This was the Church of Jacksonville. The pastor was uh, Michael T. Smith. Okay. Uh, they have disbanded. And they renamed the church, and he went back to Atlanta under his, uh, under uh, created for a dollar. Okay. But uh, he would always get up and, and say that, uh, well, uh, 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 concerning Halloween, he would always get up and say, uh, well, according to, I read the Bible, according to, uh, Satan has never created a day. So we're, he, he, he we're going to, uh, uh, celebrate the day for the kids, and then they would get up and uh, have a contest to who bought the most candy, and they would decorate their cars and call it trunk and treat. Trunk and for treat. The so, so his answer to his <laughs> an, his answer to why it was okay for Christians to celebrate Halloween was that Satan never created days, any holy days. Yeah, he never created a day. The most high created the day, so Satan uh, okay. couldn't take that day or hijack that day. Okay, so what you're saying is he was teaching everyone in his congregation at the mega church that Halloween was God's day because Satan never created a holy Correct. day. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. And let me right, let, let me ask you, not that it really matters, but I want to just put it out there. Well, it does matter to some degree. Was this pastor black or white? He, he was he was white. Lord have but, mercy. But most of the come he had a mixture of uh black and white. No, I ain't talking about his congregation. So you got a white pastor saying that God never uh -huh. that, that Satan never created a day. Uh, let me tell you, you, let me tell you, you were, be, you, you were being uh, guided. I'm glad the most high have sent the devil back the way he came from, but that was Satan's son up in, up in your building. I'm going to tell you, a lot of these, uh, let me tell uh, you, we, I agree. there's research that a lot of these witches and warlocks and sorcerers, they're getting high positions within the Christian church to deceive the Christians, uh, what you would call the innocent, the pure of our people, the ignorant on purpose. There's, because they know the Bible isn't being taught uh, in, in, in our churches. So they're coming in purposely deceiving us. Oh yeah, Satan never had a day. Every pagan on earth know, know about the, the pagan days. The horn god Pan is being celebrated everywhere by pagans as we speak. Yeah. Lord God. have mercy. And you know what? They can only teach that mess amongst our people. Amongst our people. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother, for that info. Key info. I'm, I'm surprised no one didn't come. Well, Jesus is the reason for the season. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Anything you'd like to say, uh, uh, Gaj, I know you over there. Uh, yes, I'm there. I wonder if you could hear my mic mute. Man, I'm telling you. Come on. No, no, no. Let, let it loose. Let it go. Nah. Ah, boy. Listen, Allah, man. I, you, say, you, you said it all. You with me? This, you know, you said it all. This season is, is Satan's at his, you know, at his best. With what, with what they're doing and the churches that celebrate this 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 mess, you know, 
has doing uh, you know has been doing our people a great disservice. Ninety seconds. They are so, they are tempting God on purpose. Exactly. exactly. They are tempting God. Man, um, I mean, you know, what 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 more what more can we say right now or put out right now, showing the people, you know, it's last week black 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 um, consciousness black. Sixty um, seconds. Black magic, black devils. Black magic, black of, devils. Yeah, go on. And all of it, all of it, li linking into this week. All of it is, you know, is the same. You understand these, you know, these churches dealing with Halloween and and and, and promoting it. Like I still, I'm still here. I'm still here, dumbfounded as, as to the um the the, the the Christians before telling you it's okay to go celebrate to celebrate this. And and this is a, this is this is this is why this is another thing, you know. How do you how do you combat a society that is that is deep in lawlessness, with by telling them that there is no law, and there is no rules to follow. So you know, um, let me let me read something here real quick out of the Bible. Just remind, I just just came to my mind. Um, the book of Isaiah. Seconds. Isaiah one. And it says, and I'm gonna start at verse two. A few verses here. Um, Elder Rakai. Let me uh, let me jump down some more. It says, it says here, we'll start at verse 4. Ha, huh, a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, mm. children that are corrupters. Mm. They have forsaken the Most High. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel in anger. They are gone away backwards. Why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the feet, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it. So we're dealing with mad people. Yeah. From the foot to the head is craziness. Yeah. Okay. But wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. Mm. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm here in California and I'm looking. The Bible says this. Your country is desolate. Mm -hmm. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour in your presence. And it's desolate as overthrown by strangers. And the daughters of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, mm. as a lodge in a garden of, of cucumbers, as a siege, as a besieged city. Except the most I have hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, mm. we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Mm. So unless unless you know there's a remnant of us here. Let me tell you, brother, if, uh, let me tell you, Gaja, if the Most High wasn't merciful, and if there wasn't more people the Most High had to gather here before the judgment, mm -hmm. this place would have been destroyed. It was because of the Most High having mercy on us, giving us time to repent, giving our yeah. people time to figure out who we were and, and, and what is our purpose on earth. Because why? In doing the research, America was never, never established under the moral law, statutes, and commandments of God. It was evil from its inception. Mm -hmm. It was never good. But the mo but guess what? Hey, the Most High patience has ran out concerning mm -hmm. this concerning this country. It just ran out. It's only a matter of time before he's just going to rain down on Babylon. It's just a, it, we're this close. When the mega churches started popping up, when they when they started uh, uh, denouncing and putting down the King James Version Bible, when they started pushing Asian teachings and yoga and witchcraft, and above all, when they made uh, uh uh, what you would call same-sex marriage a law in this country, 
all that is when those sins reached up into heaven and the Most High began to bring that bring judgment. That's when we started hearing of, of, of all of these sicknesses from nowhere. That's when we started to see more and more of our people die, more and more funerals, more death and sicknesses. That's when we started seeing commercials, every other commercial, speaking of a sickness and a drug for it. Mm -hmm. This place has been plagued and is ripe for judgment. Huh. And see, and that's why the Most High have, have us rallying together as elders to say, listen, we need a plan, a fast plan to teach as many people as we can before it's time. Okay? It's time to rally together with believers and say, listen, here's our, here's our ministry. Here's your purpose. Find your purpose according to the Holy Spirit and do it because we'll need it. We need to figure out who's who amongst us and prepare for the judgment. Prepare for what's coming here and make preparation and let everyone know judgment. And after Babylon is judged, if, if it be the Lord's will, we'll be the servants and ministers on the other side of the world. Letting everyone know that we were once a part of that great city that is burned. It would be our position to prepare the earth for the coming of our Lord and Savior. To baptize and all that. Get brothers and sisters ready throughout the earth for the coming of our Lord and Savior. After all nations everywhere, like is written up in Revelations 18, witness the burning. Talking about a bonfire. It's going to be a fire. But we have to establish righteousness amongst our people. And, and then spread that righteousness throughout the earth. Begin to prepare our people for what's, what's to come. Because there is no help in Babylon. She's finished already. Stick with me. We still have some people on the, on the calls. Let me go through them. All due respect to you brothers and sisters that are waiting. But I, I, you know, I had to get that out real quick. All right. Let's go down the line. Okay. All right. We have, uh, okay. I went to uh, Haram's sister, Queen from Texas. Hopefully I'll see her there this weekend. Sister Queen, you tell them you're live on Blog Talk. Tell them I'm planning on being there this Friday. Oh, I, I can't wait to Shalom. see you. Shalom. Shalom. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. We can't wait for you to come down. Also, um, I just want to mention a couple of things. I know I got one minute. Um, on. I know they doing child sacrifices, but also um, be mindful of the fact that children are already on their uh, partaking of this uh witch hunt or whatever that's going on because i know like during around holidays like this when i do group therapy with my adolescents they uh my gentile adolescents mainly they participate in something called uh creepy pasta that i know that their uh, parents talk about a lot of times and they have to you know take the ipad from them and their parents are literally putting up a fight but on this site the children are able to go on there and kill and do all types of evil stuff. And then they end up um, just zoning out the parents, say, and just become another person. And the next thing you know, by the time that they get to me, they're already cutting themselves up. Some are, you know, have suicide attempts, and some actually go on and commit suicide. So, you know, they're already playing with that stuff and online and stuff. But I was also looking online that some um, black activist some, uh, in Missouri, her son was um, hung for Halloween. And then there was a guy on a train out in California. He uh, had some chainsaws, pulled them out on people uh, for Halloween. So, yeah, it's, it's a bunch of satanic stuff that's going on right now. But that's all I wanted to bring up. Hey, sister, what you're dropping is, is no, it's no different than the purge. <laughs> you know, it's happening right before us, but yeah. every, everyone out there believe it's a movie. Mm -hmm. There's a purge going on. It, mm -hmm. it is. And Thank it's you. online right now. We're just looking at it. But yeah, just in California and just hanging, I mean, hung this woman's son up on a tree. And she actually posted the pictures of her son. He, he was a teenager and the police are wanted to say that it was suicide. But they said he 
you know, didn't ever have any evidence of suicide or had any suicide attempts or anything like that. So. Yeah, it's a sacrifice. It's, it's very interesting. Sacrifice. Right it's, it's what we've been yeah. saying for years. Okay, and it's about time that we rally together and protect those that belong to us, that protect and warn our brothers and sisters of, of the world we're really living in. It's no time to be walking ignorant in this world anymore, ignorant mm -hmm. to the devices of Satan and, and what this world really is. Mm -hmm. it's, no, it's no more time for that. I'm going to put you on hold, sister. No mm -hmm. more time for that. And when the Lord, when it tells us that it's high time that we awake out of sleep, okay, at one time, we, we used to pass it off as some type of cognitive dissonance. Well, I'm ignorant to it, so nothing affects me. I'm going to make my own little bubble, my own little world, and that's the reality for my family. Nah. Your eyes are wide open now. This is the world that, that has always been. Okay? Holidays were never about Christ, the holidays of this world. They were never about God. They were all about Satanists getting, getting access to us to other people and children and sacrificing the evil. The only thing the internet has done and the cameras have, has done, it's just shine a light on the world we've always lived in. Mm. Now there's pictures and videos out there of it and it, it make everyone right. out there believe that, man, things are getting worse. Mm. It's just shining a light on what has always existed, folks. Mm. It's always been evil. I look at... What, what, I see things entirely different now. I remember we used to see those stories. Oh, man. Man, look what happened to um, Bill Cosby's son. But you look at Bill Cosby. He, he, he didn't look alarmed with what happened with his son, his only son that was killed on a the road. Then what happened with Michael Jordan's son, I mean, Michael Jordan's father. Mm -hmm. And all these people losing key loved ones next to them. And no one is connecting that to satanic Ritual sacrifices for power. It's always the Lord. That's why the Lord told us to stay away from necromancers, familiar spirits, and all that. Because why? There's an agreement. These demons will give you riches and power and knowledge, and believe it or not, they'll give you skill mm -hmm. to become a god in this world. What? For what? For a soul. Mm -hmm. And it, what you were saying, uh, Gaja? Now I'm saying it goes on. I mean, like Stallone, his son died. Exactly. It, it um, was it was his son, his son that died. You had what? What's that other actor that died? Uh, I know you're talking about uh, Travolta. John Travolta's son. Mm -hmm. and then, James Earl Jones. Yeah, and then what happened with, with Mike Tyson's daughter? They say she found hung by a wire, mm. uh, on a weight set, and then after that, his career bo started booming again. Right. We used to look at these things as isolated scenarios, not realizing that it was our people, people on earth, regular people, understand the agreement, the ritualistic agreement with Satan for power in this society, folks. We used to just explain these things off as accidents. These are no accidents. This is the world we're born in. We're, this world is being ran by devil worshipers, folks. And eventually you have to pay the piper. Eventually. Okay? You can't go to those higher levels without blood, without giving blood. And we need to do a, a new show. Something just came to me. Right? Mm. The real religion of the, the Illuminati. Because the Illuminati is just this broad word without right. defining... Who's behind it? Mm -hmm. What people are really in it that we see every day? What religion are they? What ethnicity are they? Mm -hmm. So when you use the word Illuminati, it's just like saying globalists. What right. is the true religion and beliefs of the Illuminati is a show we're going to do. We're going to show you who the Illuminati is. The Bible showed us who the Illuminati always was. That's a show in itself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's going to be a groundbreaking mm -hmm. show there. That just came out of nowhere. The spirit was like, you know what? We need to reveal because th this ambiguous Illuminati, without pointing to the real sacrifices the Lord told us to beware of. He always pointed out the Illuminati. They were the Babylonians 
Whoever was, was in power made an agreement with Satan, the Romans. And today, who's ever controlling the money media and the contracts? Believe it or not, brothers and sisters, these are your Illuminati's, the gatekeepers. But you cannot gain power. Now, they'll let you get but so high. But if you really want to get to the level to be revered as a god or goddess on earth like Jay-Z and Beyonce is, you best believe that the payment is blood. These people, and it's not about money with these people. These people print money. It gets to a point where money is not even a part of their circle. Okay? They don't even think about money. It's about souls, folks. What's more than... Uh, money is made through, through what? Trees? Paper? They don't care about that. They care about souls. It's about collecting souls. The control of people. Okay? Captivity. How do, how do you keep people captive? You take souls. So the agreement is souls. And the souls are paid in blood, br brothers and sisters. We're going to do a show on that very, very soon. Have to. Let's go down the line. Uh, we have uh, Sister. Uh, we already had Sister Cora from New York, right? Did we? Uh, I don't believe so. Sister Cora from New York. <laughs> Shalom, Sister Cora. Were you on earlier? Hello? Shalom. Shalom, Elder. Hi. I just had a remark. I remember... When uh, my children were in school, they were in a uh, parochial school, a uh, Lutheran school, and uh, I remember one of the parents saying uh, that uh, when, when they, the teacher sent home the information about the Halloween party, she says, I can't believe a religious school is going to uh, celebrate Halloween. She says, my children will not come to school that day. And I remember one of the teachers saying, says, well, it's because of Christ. If he died, you know, we can make fun of the devil. And how did that, you know, she played it off as like, you know, we're making fun of the devil and just having fun. We're have making fun. fun of the devil. But what script I is that? We saw a video <laughs> on, uh, on the YouTube channel. It was posted by Judas Back. It was one of your videos about uh, GOCC, about uh, Halloween is Satan's deck. And I watched it. And as that witch that was on earlier said, it is spiritually dangerous. And people don't realize the spiritual dangerous of uh, delving in Halloween. They just say, and like uh, my family member said, oh, it's a day to get candy. But we changed the day for candy to uh, one of the days we're supposed to celebrate, like the first day of uh, the fall season. You know, we can eat candy apples and, and have pumpkin pie and everything else. On that day, all we have to do is just switch the date. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, why do you gotta go, why, why, why you gotta wait till October thirty first to eat a candy apple? Right. I mean, <laughs> right, right. I'm like, you, so my daughter went out oh my eight goodness. dollars on candy for this day, but you know, I I bought now I I pulled out on some chocolate back in August. You know, you can eat give me candy or whatever you want any time mm -hmm. of the year. Yeah. Now, before I would go, I would like to know, is, is Elder Gabar still here with us? Oh, Elder Gabar, you on the phone, right? Yes, sir. Still on. Still on. Still, still listening. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, uh, Elder Gabar. I'm, I'm in the Bronx here, and I've been wanting to get with your church. So, uh, would you just get, uh, if you can see this number of mine, if you can get this number from uh, Elder Ricard and give me a call at your earliest convenience, I want to get with the church here. I Absolutely, I'll be in New York this week. I, I don't know uh, elders in the studio that can probably grab. Uh, maybe I could log in here. Okay. Uh, you, you know yeah, what? Yep. Yeah. You know oh, what? Right, you know what I'll do. Elder? Also, I am a seamstress. Okay. Also, okay. I'm a seamstress, and I can offer my services for your. I am apparel. Oh, know, we're gonna need her. And all that. We're gonna need okay. her. Yeah. Okay then. Oh, amen to that. Amen to that. So yeah, we'll we'll we're gonna grab your information, and then uh, hopefully we'll see you this weekend. Okay, then. Thank you. Uh, okay. Shalom. Shalom. Let me put you on hold. Oh, yeah, we have a seamstress. Hey, guess what? Another thing is that's why we need y'all help with our with our new building. We They also gave us a, 
another section in which we can put I am apparel where we can do our own clothing and all that as part a section on the outside of the building. That's why we need help if y'all can help us with this new building, okay? And and the new place that we'll actually be doing the clothing for I Am Apparel. If you want to send a check or money order, let me put that out there. You can send it out to the Gathering of Christ Church. It's uh, 2000 Hamilton Street, P.O. Box 946. Okay, Hamilton Street, P.O. Box 946, Gathering of Christ Church, Philadelphia, PA, 19130. Or you can go to Gathering of Christ, hit donate, mm -hmm. and donate to help us build this. We want to every, have everything up. We're trying to make it quick. The thing was painted in one day to let you know we're not playing around. So anything you're giving us, we're putting it right to it so that we can have everything up by January 1st. But we need your help. Now, we have this sister that's a stream, uh, a seamstress. We need the people who can do sisters with those types of gifts. Uh, let me let me send this to you real quick, Gabar. I'm going to send you her phone number so you can get with her for gathering in New York, as well as helping us, you know, with what we need to do. Hey, hey time is short, right? Amen, amen. So I, I have it right here, absolutely. The water, Elder. my brother. All right, let's go down the line here. We only have a few more, Willie. Yeah, I got Sister Ahabakora. Uh, 856 area to code then brother Kwa in Florida okay let's go to uh, sister Ahabakura first Shalom Ahabakura Ahabakura okay <laughs> how are you doing yeah um you know I am well so thank you elders um I just want to say about the uh, Christian church um around 2015 I stopped going because I had started reading the Bible, and Most High had showed me the holy days in the Bible. And for years, I knew holidays didn't sit well with me. I, I come to know they were pagan. And I began to ask many pastors. I was trying to get answers. Why are we doing these pagan days and ignoring these holy days? And why are we not keeping the Sabbath? And who is Israel? I said, as I keep reading this Bible, I keep the Most High is speaking to somebody named Israel. <laughs> I asked, I begged, nobody would give me answers. I said, mm. if you don't want to refer me to a deacon, I said, and I don't want your words. I want it from the scripture. They, they would not answer me. So my last word when I left, I said, you know that I know there's more to this Bible than you teach in the congregation. Mm. And I left and never mm. went back. And I kept searching, searching. Uh, and I said, Father, please help me find people that believe like I believe. And um, there was this brother that I was letting be my teacher for a period of time. He was so low, but he kept rebuking Elder Raka. And I said, that's not right. You can't open rebuke somebody. You have to go to them if you have a problem. I said, but who is this Elder Raka? Raka, he keeps rebuking. <laughs> and so when I looked at a video, I was hooked ever since. And then I sought out for the church. And I, I responded to something that Elder um, Lloyd had for Georgia. And when he contacted me, I don't live in Georgia, but I just needed to be connected. I mean, I've watched the videos. I, I watched last Passover. And I said, oh, hi, I will be at next Passover. I'm going to find these people and I'm going to be there. Well, I got connected in Philly in May. I got baptized. And I'm looking forward to coming to the Passover. Oh, for all praise be <laughs> all to praise the most time. <laughs> Thank you, sister. Thank you. And I'm so excited. I, I, I sit under Elder um, um, Bishop of Ma now, and um, I live in Jersey, but I travel quick distance. But I get there, as you know, I get there. Um, but I'm so happy to be part of the ministry. Um, um, I stood my ground. Um, I never liked Hall um, Halloween. My grandmother raised me that way. She didn't like it. She raised me in a Christian church from birth, and she stood that. And I'm the only one in my family who won't do it. They did it. They was all made up today. I didn't pay them no mind. I'm not getting involved in this. Somebody dropped off candy. I'm like you. You could have gave him candy yesterday. He's not eating this. <laughs> He's not eating this. My son's not eating this. This girl's not eating this candy. So you can give it to somebody. So so I, I, I'm standing on this. I mean, it's clear as day. This Bible is simple. The Academy is great. Um, uh, Tabernacles. Better than Disney World. I love Tabernacles. It was my first time going. 
I just love everything that the Most High has brought me into this truth. I'm not leaving. I'm sticking with it. My, my, my mindset is I'm enduring to the end. That's what my mindset is. I want the Most High and nothing else. So all praises to him. Bless, bless you, sister. And a Thank you, sister. I can't, a haba kara. I can't wait to meet you. Bless you. <laughs> Yes. All right. All right. You pray for me. You pray for me at Lord of the Truth, and I feel much better. Yes. Thank. Oh, I remember you. Bless you, sister. Bless you. Bless you. And you Thank know you. what? Don't Thank let don't you. don't yes, let sir. anyone put out that fire, that fervent spirit. You keep that. That's the love that will drive you towards the kingdom. Bless you, sister. Bless you as well. Yes, okay. sir. Thank you. Bless you. And that's a that's perfect fine. that's a perfect example of a sister who who's 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 making an example of not trusting in man. Mm. When when it says woe to those that trust in man right. and make a strip right. his arm, people want to equate that to someone listening to someone teaching. Mm. No, she was under a pastor who couldn't answer those questions. Mm. The spirit stimulated her and gave her interest concerning the characters in the Bible, the actual people. Right. And she went to the pastor. Why nobody tell me about these people up in the Bible? And she didn't take that man's word for it. Well, you know, whatever his answer was, she said, if you're not going to tell me, that means you are purposely deceiving me. I'm going to find out who these people are. Mm. But that was the spirit of the Most High, rejuvenating her spirit, reviving her spirit through the knowledge of her forefathers. Mm. But, but the pastor, what? didn't relate the truth. Then she ran into a guy that was teaching her, was speaking against me. She didn't even know the church to show you how the, the, the Most High work. But the Most High was leading her to get what? Her questions answered. It had nothing to, to do about me. It had nothing to do with the brother that was rebuking me because I still don't know who he is and I could care less. I'm standing in line. You know how many stories I've heard of people coming against the truth and people came to the truth because some be, through someone who was against me or against what we, I was teaching. I'm like, hey, hey, knock yourself out mm -hmm. <laughs> because you're going to do the reverse of what you're thinking. The most tie is using you so that this person can get what they need. They didn't, they're not going to trust in that man. Right. And then they'll get the truth. And I'll tell you what, if I began to teach something that's adverse to the Bible, the Most High will guide her someplace else. If she's in spirit and truth, you understand? It's about one man planteth, another man watereth, but it's the Most High that give the increase. See? <laughs> that's what it means you can't trust in man. If a man's going to teach you against the word of God or going to try to steer you away from truth, you can't trust in that man. But the disciples were men. Christ was a man. As long as they're holding forth the doctrine and standing in truth, then that scripture doesn't apply to those. Now, I wanted to read this real quick on that because you say someone was rebuking me. Mm -hmm. Well, in order to rebuke somebody, you have, got, you have to actually be talking to that person. Right. So I want to speak to that where the scripture says this. Philippians 1 and 14. And many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy. Mm -hmm. Some people will envy someone and teach the Bible, right? Envy and strife. And some also of goodwill. The one preach of contention to try to go against people, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. They're doing it thinking they are affecting a servant. When a servant is just a servant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? But the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then? Notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached and I therein do rejoice. Yea, and will rejoice mm -hmm. for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer 
and the supply of the spirit of the anointed Yeshua. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now and also Yeshua shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me to live in Yeshua and to die is gain. But I live in the flesh. This is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I, what, what I shall choose, I want not. So this is saying, some people teach Christ through contention. Mm -hmm. They just want to go against everything and say, I'm going to show you everything this guy's teaching is wrong. Everything is wrong this guy's teaching. But I let me keep on doing it. That's fine. Because you're going to find that you're not fighting against a servant. And you may be opening the ears to someone saying, if you're paying so much attention to this guy, it must be something to what he's teaching. Let me go see what you're hating on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me go check out what you're hating on. Right. Because now I'm being around you, uh, you know, I'm realizing that you be hating on stuff that really people shouldn't be hating on, right. getting to know you now. <laughs> So maybe over here is some stuff I've been looking for. Mm. <laughs> you think you, you good on that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, let's go down the line here. We'll have a uh, few. Go, go, go. Uh, El, yes, El, yes. I'm cracking up. I'm cracking up. I'm eating my phone. I'm, 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 <laughs> 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 no, go ahead. Yeah, this thing, this thing reminds me of, you know, there was a there was a video a while back that uh, uh, somebody re secretly recorded me. Exposing El the Gabar from GOCC. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then somebody called me, like, El, you know, this El Gabar? Yeah, you know, I found out about you guys through this video I saw about you, you being exposed. But when I heard the, the recording, <laughs> I said, wait a minute. <laughs> this brother's, you know, it, it, it's rebuking this brother, and it was messed up that they record you, and, and yada, yada, yada. And everything you were saying on the video was right on. Where you guys are at? <laughs> yeah, because I they, want to fellowship with you guys. <laughs> because when when people call themselves exposing, they're really exposing themselves. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, so, that's so what, I'm yeah, cracking yeah. up behind the scenes over here. Yeah. <laughs> they they exposing themselves because why? How, what person pays attention to nothing mm -hmm. or makes another person the bane of their existence if there's nothing to that person mm. <laughs> you understand so really what 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 they do is what paul was writing you think you're adding to my bonds you think but but a servant or someone who understand that listen i'm grateful that christ forgave me for the things i've done wrong and i'm just trying to work for the kingdom of heaven i'm not here for accolades or for people to say that he's this or is that. i i want to make it so when you get to that degree in which you, you understand that, that that really all things are equal, which is brothers and sisters, and I'm just a servant doing my part, mm -hmm. you understand? It gets you beyond all the other, the criticism. None of that stuff really pull you down and all that because you, you because why? You're just a servant. <laughs> all, mm -hmm. praise, all praises go to Christ. So if someone, I don't care what type of light you shine on it, even if a negative light, that's good. Mm -hmm. Because some brothers or sister is going to listen to what you say and gonna, they're gonna find out about our church through you. And mm -hmm. they, and and when they do, they're gonna learn something from the most tie mm -hmm. that they didn't know before. The most tie will show them something that they need for their life. So if let me if let me tell you if I need to be a a, a, a whooping boy or somebody to, to rain down on me and all that to have someone see the truth take a go at it have fun <laughs> you understand well, amen amen and also I want to line back on the on the yes the the scripture the elder lawyer wrote uh, was reading earlier today about the the, the liberty. And this is scripture, or this is a quote that uh, yeah. that Christian pastor was utilizing in regards of liberty. Yeah. That we are, you know, using the context that 
because we under liberty, then we are we have the liberty to celebrate Halloween. That's what he was trying to say. Yeah. But when Paul was talking about liberty in, in his proper context here, in uh, Galatians 5 and 13, it yeah. says, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for the accusion of the flesh. Exactly. But by love serve one another. So what he was saying here, because the word there, by, is, is, is a Greek word that could also be translated for the sake of. Yes. Or for. So you will use liberty not for the flesh, not for your own, you know, your own enjoyment. I want to do a Halloween party. Or I want to go out and do trick or treat. But you use liberty to serve one another. And what is it Paul was trying to say here? And I use this example all the time in the law class. That if you are in the Shabbat, you see a homeless man, and you go and you see he doesn't have any shoes or a jacket, and it's cold outside. And you go to a store and you buy that a, 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 that homeless man or woman a jacket and a pair of shoes. Yeah, in the scripture it says that should not buy or sell. But the liberty is there because you're serving your brother. Exactly. So the concept that, that, that Paul was saying is, is that don't use liberty to, to, you know, to, uh, 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 to deal with the flesh for self-enjoyment, uh, 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 but use liberty... To serve one another in Christ. Exactly. So if you, yeah, so if you're walking down the street and you see and you go into the Shabbat class and you see a, a, a two for one special and you go into the into the store and you buy yourself a shoes or you're in, 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 you know because you want to catch this special, then that's your own service. Exactly. You but you you satisfy your own self. Mm. So if you but if you do it to feed to to clothe a a, a, a brother who doesn't have shoes or a jacket, exactly. you're not feeding yourself. You're not feeding your flesh. You're, feeding, you're helping that brother in love. So it's a content. That's why Christ says, uh, do not judge according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Yes. And so I want to also add no, no, the proper context of what Paul was saying. Yeah, and the point you're making of the context is you can't have liberty as an occasion for the flesh. Mm. So trick or treat is not to serve a righteous act towards your fellow man. That's a that's a selfish act for mm -hmm. children. You exactly. claiming it's for the children. That's for the flesh. Mm -hmm. So you can't li use liberty for that. Liberty is to do good according to the gospel, according to the work. When Amen. it comes to doing the work, you do you you know you it may be it may appear you're breaking the law, but you're not. You're on the Sabbath doing good. Perfect example. You can't use liberty for Halloween. Or Christmas. Let me get one other scripture, if you don't mind, before I go on, before, before I break open a few of these calls, because mm -hmm. I know we, we have a long trip yeah. tomorrow. So uh, let's break down soon. Uh, get, let's get Colossians the second chapter because we love Christians love going to this particular scripture when it comes to because it say the word holy days, right? Now I'm gonna show you how a Satanist would teach this scripture. Read. Colossians 2.16. Read. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day. A Satanist will say, no man, according to your Bible, no man can judge me in respect of a holy day. And then he'll start naming satanic holy days. Halloween, Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving. You can't judge me in respect of a holy day. Well, hold up. I never read of Christmas in the Bible or Easter in the Bible or Sunday worship in the Bible. It doesn't exist. Okay. The holy days Paul was speaking of was the holy days that were written of in the Bible. Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, on and on and on. Because now the now those Israelites who were under Christ was doing those days under Christ opposed to the laws of Moses. So no longer was blood sacrifice needed for those holy days. Now, that was a problem for the Pharisees and scribes that were living during this time on the outside of the disciples. Why are you doing Passover without certain sacrifices and all that and doing it exactly uh, uh, with the customs of our fathers and the artifacts of our fathers? That's what it's saying, let no man judge you in respect of holy days. We're down doing those same holy days written up in the Bible through Christ. 
So you can't plug in a Satan day with this scripture and say, you can't judge me for Sunday. Mm -hmm. You can't judge. When did the Lord say serve Sunday or, or have Sunday as, as a holy day? So it's not speaking of that. It's speaking of judging me on doing the Sabbath under Christ opposed to how the Pharisees were doing that holy day. Or Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, it wasn't speaking of a satanic day. But you will have Satanists come in and say, you can't judge me for celebrating Halloween. You will have a pagan come in and say, you can't judge me for dealing with the winter solstice yule time of Saturnalia when that's Christmas. So you cannot use this scripture for satanic days. Let me make that clear, right? Now, and also, the, the, Elder, can I also line back on you were saying? Yes. This scripture, when you look at the way they broke it down, yeah. verse, verse 16 and verse 17 is actually part of one thought. And exactly. when you read it both together, it gives you even a greater clarification in regards of these feast days are a shadow of things to come. Because when it says, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or in a new moon or of the Sabbath day, which are a shadow of things to come. So Paul was establishing that these feast days, we're going to keep it in the kingdom. Exactly. But the, bo the body, or the, the word there, the Greek word is substance, is of Christ. So in the kingdom, we're going to keep these feasts. Like you read in Zechariah 14, that, it, that all nations will come and, and, and serve the king in the feast of tabernacle. Exactly. Or when it goes in Isaiah uh, 61 and 22, it talks about from one new moon into the next new moon, from one Sabbath into the next Sabbath, all flesh will come for serving for the Lord. So these feasts are a shadow of uh, things to come and things like that. So we can be ju judging. He was dressing the feast, not Christmas. He was exactly. not, this, you know, the new moon, That's you can find it in the Old Testament. The, the Sabbath, you can find it in the Old Testament. The dietary laws, you can find it in the Old Testament. Exactly. Not Christmas, not Easter. So I don't want to line back on that. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Great points. Stop using the scriptures for your own vain satanic worships. And I'm speaking specifically to Christians. Unless you do the research on your holy days, no longer will you use the Bible to excuse your worships. Do the research and don't try to use the Bible to excuse your evil worships. If you're worshiping Saturnalia, tell your child you're worshiping Saturnalia and give them the history of that and say, well, we call it Christmas here in America, but it was really the worship of Satan during the winter solstice. Stop trying to use Christ uh, uh, being laid in a manger to excuse your satanic worships. They have nothing to do with the Christ of the Bible. We're taking our Christ back. And it's deeper than him just, it's deeper than him being black. We're taking him back. We're taking our Bible back. We're taking our holy days back. From your satanic desecration. More. Only got a few more. Uh, Brother Kawhi, Florida. Shalom, Elder. What's going on, baby? I'm hey, I'm here. I'm Hello? here. I'm, here it is. I'm blessed uh, by the I best. That. That I'm blessed sure. by the best, and his name is Ahaya. Talk to me, young man. Man, man, I love you, man. You turned me on like almost eight years ago, man. I'm the keeper. I was just talking to up lies, man. It is what it is. The whole, the whole truth. Respect to El Gaja. Respect to uh, LBL, uh, the lawyer. Respect to Elder, um, man, it, it, anybody know what it is, man. I'm your DJ. You the artist. It's what it is, man. You just, <laughs> you started it, brother. Like I was telling John, boy, it is what it is. I mean, what can I say, man? It is what it is, man. You you started this shit. I mean, forgive me. Forgive for me, y'all. Family show. Family show now. Talk the to bottom me. line. Is, yeah, all, yes, sir. All the bottom line to the is this, time. man. We all have a purpose in this world. Kind, kind, like the sister was calling in, Jersey, Jersey in the house, like the sister was calling. Look, the bottom line is this, real recognize real. The certain brothers, I'm going I'm to put it out there, certain brothers really, really have a, a desire to serve the most high. You know, I'm going to tell you, Elder, you know what's hurting you the most? Can I talk to you straight out? Come on. Before our worldwide assembly, 
it's because of the affiliation with one west and what i have to it's like it's hard to try to explain to brothers that you put all that down you taught me i didn't i didn't bro i used to go to new york picking up my coke and all that when i was the evil since 13 selling that stuff i used to come through there and laughing at them out there with the burger king suits on like you call them it's, it's funny because these same brothers got the truth. Some of them brothers are a little older than us. You know what I'm saying? I was born in 73. I think I've mean, got a few years, but you still my elder, but I'm the elder. How about that? <laughs> I'm just playing with you. But the bottom line is this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember going through there. And um, they associate our church. Like, I seen all, elder, I'm going to be honest with you. You know this from the gate. I tried to prove everything you told me wrong for a year, for like six, for six months or more before <laughs> I got baptized and none of that. And that's just the truth. I'm just telling the truth. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not big enough to church. This is my spot, man. It's what it is. And it's like, it, because we, we associated with, they call us the alphabet boys. Yeah. They put us with GMS, IUIC. They didn't, yeah, they didn't even baptize with nobody, man. Danny, it's like, it's like, but, but I'm going to be honest with this one element. They call themselves the remnant and they really, they really doing their best, man. They really doing their best. And I see it, but it's just like they associate the church that the, like I told John, boy, I'm going to put it out there, man. I'm, you know what? I don't want to talk too much, but put it like this here, man. I was in sin. I, even after the truth, I fell back in sin before the whole so before, I'm looking up at the, at the I'm looking up in the heavens right now, okay. I repented for all the sins that I got after the truth, and guess what? I should have been did what I just put out there. You already know because I kicked it up for you, all right. I should have been did this. The truth, music, and all that going mainstream, baby. We taking over everything. Now how about that? Brick City, Philly, Cali. Gathering the Christ Church. Well, let me. This your brother DJ Akawa, but nah. Well, let Let's me get it. Let me talk let me, to me, Miles. Okay, let me talk to you. First of all, when you say you know what's hurting us, let me tell you, brother. No man's idea of what this is add nothing to us. Okay. Because, uh -huh. because why? They're not the parameter of righteousness and, and how this doctrine should be taught. Christ and the disciples are. And you know what? I, I, I kind of like them calling us alphabet boys and all that. I, I like it. Because what they do is they, 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 they give attention to the ministry mm -hmm. that's taught. Because when people come to figure out what we're talking about, they're not going to hear no alphabet boys. They're going to hear this Bible. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm saying. They've called, mm -hmm. brother, they have called Christ worse. And, and here, here's the deep thing about it, how it's not hurting us at all, brother. I don't even know who you're talking about. <laughs> you understand? The people you talk about calling us alphabet boys... Uh -huh. I wouldn't know them if they were to come up to me and give me a glass of water. But they know of us enough to call me an alphabet boy. So this is what I'm saying. It goes back to this. They know me. I'm not saying, but no, 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 they call them, like, it's certain things that I can't even help them with, like, they call them hallelujah and all that. Hey, like, hey, hey it's brother. It's like, the hey, guys in the Christ church is like on a high, hey, like, hey, like a scholarly level. Hey, brother. It's like you have to come down, like, okay. oh, to help our brothers. Okay, brother. I'm going to put you on hold in a minute because I, I know you're hyped, but you got to listen, okay? This thing is huh. well beyond all of that. Right. It's beyond this guy you're talking about. Mm hmm it's beyond the music you're talking about. It's beyond other people's observation of what this is. Okay? Because all of that pale in comparison to the kingdom of heaven, and it has nothing to do with preparation for what, what's about to happen to our people. That's right. It pales in comparison. A matter of fact, it's child's play. 
what's going on. And that's what and that's the that's the drawback with this internet and social media because children are playing when they should be rallying under the spirit that the most high has put forth. Christ's spirit. Now have nothing to do with us. To have us sit and pray together and beseech the most high together and to plan for what's to come. You understand? So I could care less about this, this person you're talking about. I can care less about any of this stuff. I can care less about the music. The only reason I'll do the music is to glorify the Most High so that they can come back and follow these videos and hear this word. I could care less about anything but the kingdom of heaven, brother. Okay? So that's what I would like to say to you. Stop, stop listening to man's critique because while they're on the side, the kingdom is coming. And on top of the kingdom is coming, on top of that, they are about to get jack, boot, jack booted when, when this UN armies and others come and they're going to wish they gathered together under like mind men who could help them through these times. They're going to be by themselves with a, you know, with a DVD or a CD by themselves, brother. So I can, right. it's about us preparing together, brother. It's at the door. Judgment is at the door. And we all, every, every one of us, we're going to need each other. Judgment is out the door, baby. Okay, brother. I'm going to put you on. I'm going to put you online. I'm going to put you on hold, brother. Nice speaking to you. Bless you. Who's next? Brother Azra from Las Vegas. You're live on Blog Talk. Let's go. Shalom, uh, Elder Ricard, Lawyer, Gabar, Gaza. Um, Shalom. Shalom. You know, you guys, uh, you guys are doing a great work, man. And, I, and it's a blessing to hear that you guys are still, you know, putting it down like you guys are putting it down as far as revealing these wicked holidays. You know, because it's needed for our people and for those who are called. You know, ain't too many brothers out there doing that. They either out there fighting about the name or about other madness. And it's no time for that. It's time for Israel to gather together and become one. Because when Christ comes, that's the only thing he's looking for is oneness. It's just like the Christian church. He's not coming back for the Pentecostal, the Apostolic, Baptist, Kojic, Methodist, Presbyterian. He's not coming back for none of that madness. He's coming back for a people that have gathered together in his name and that is doing the work. And I commend you, brothers, for continuing this work. And I tell you, man, it's like it's needed, especially for our people, because our people are struggling with certain things, especially with these holidays that are popping up. Halloween. You got some of our people struggling with their children, trying to figure out how they're going to tell their children that we can't celebrate these days. And it, it's a task. Mm. It, it really is. Yeah, we just heard it. To tell your child that you can't celebrate Halloween. Yeah, we just heard it. To tell your child, your child you can't. I'm sorry. No, you're right. We just heard it. A brother just called in with his uh, stepson. With the same, with the same, yeah, hey, you're asking us, putting the burden on me to explain to his son. And I know how it is because I, I mean, growing up, man, this was one of the, the days to look forward to, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. I know how tough that is telling a child while everyone else is having quote unquote fun to sit on the side and, and look at this. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not easy. Absolutely. And, yeah. and a child don't understand that. Yeah. They, they don't because they see up folks are doing it. Yeah. And it's like, and they trying to figure out why are they being denied, you yeah. know, to do this. But, you know, it's up to us, you know, as parents, you know, to stand strong and to teach our children and to embrace them and let them know, you know, it's like, we, we just can't do this. Yeah. It's not that we don't love you and we don't want you to, to do that. It's just that we don't do that as a people. Exactly. And, and we'll come into it at the end of the day. We'll come into it. But, you know, not to take too much time because I know you got other callers, but, you know, I commend you, brothers. And Brother Gabar in New York, man, you keep teaching that law class, brother. Because can't nobody teach you like you, brother. 
Real talk. All uh, 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 glory, glory to the Father. All glory to the Father. Why? <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Uh, amen. Amen. All right, man. Bless you. You better be blessed, man. And, and shalom. 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 Let me make this clear, too. And I'm glad the brother brought that out. Ain't nobody coming back for Pentecostals. Let me tell you. Christ ain't coming back for GOCC. He ain't coming back for IUIC or IGG or whatever letters you want. Let me make that clear. Christ is coming back for a remnant That's right. that is baptized according to his principles and doctrines that were laid. That were placed on this earth through Peter and the disciples. That's who he's coming back for. For the sake of social media and to have a title, because you need a title to be able to do things, you have all these names out here. But at the end of the day, Christ is coming back for his people that are baptized for repentance of it and have been baptized and put away sin, okay, and are instilling the correct doctrine on earth for God's people. It's because all of this stuff is going to be dismantled when what? Yeah, when, that, when that EMP hits and there's no electricity and these computers go out, where's your titles then? It's going to be what you learn in your connection with the Most High. And for those that are li of like minds who have come together, you're going to understand what this time was for. It have nothing to do with these letters. It have everything to do with the gospel that was that began through Christ and was instilled in his disciples. Mm. I want to make that clear. Sister Sabrina, last call. Shalom. This is Elder Rikashi of the Gathering of Christ Ooh. Church, actually. And last call of the night. We made it to you, Sister Sabrina. All right. All praise to the Most High. Uh, shalom, Elder. Shalom. Um, I'm calling because I just wanted to bring this to your attention that not only are children being taken now, but it women are reporting, and I'm talking middle-aged women, 50 and 60 years old, are saying that they got away, but they were actually being kidnapped and taken. Mm. And this man reported that his wife and daughter were at the mall, uh, in fact, at Target, and came out to get in the car, and he said these men surrounded their car, and he said these, this is a big establishment. He said these are cars that are expensive, you would never think, and he said they sit parking out watching people, and they were going to take his daughter and his wife. Mm. And he said his wife has been so shaken, she hasn't been able to leave the house, and a 60-year-old nurse ran into this restaurant and told people how this man was trying to kidnap her, and a 55-year-old woman went on the news, and this has been in the Michigan area, and she reported that this man tried to kidnap her, and he followed her to another store. And uh, this is going on right now, so they're not just limiting children, but they're starting to take women with children and middle aged women. So I say to all the women out here, even men, it's like pay attention to your surroundings. If you can help it, don't be out late in these stores shopping. But a lot of this stuff has been happening during the day. Mm -hmm. So evil is not waiting for nighttime. And I, I just want to get that out there. And, and these things have happened recently. I guess it's, 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 it's really more so have everything to do with this time of year, right? Did this just happen not too long ago? You, not you too long ago. And the one husband has been sitting in the parking lot. He was saying if he was watching and just if he could help somebody just protection. And he was asking men, like, look out for women and children that are out alone and on older women. And because, I mean, it's, it's just serious. Now, I, I, I have oh, to... Oh, and Elder, can my son answer this question? No, no, go on, go on. You can answer the question. Come I'm on. sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead, I'm listening. Oh, okay. My, my, son, wanted to, my son wanted to ask you a question. Okay, sure. Oh, uh, a moment. Hello, Melvin. Uh, my name is Jordan. How are you doing, Jordan? Um, I'm, I'm doing well. Um, okay. 
um, my wife and my four children, we wanted to attend um, GOCC Philadelphia, including my mother and my um, sister-in-law. Is it possible that somebody from the church can get back to uh, my mom? Her phone number should be on here, right? Okay, let me get it real quick. One moment. One moment, one moment right? One moment. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, type it there. Let me write it down. Now, just write in, type in child kidnapped, Philadelphia school. Okay. Muslim. One moment. Let me get that real quick. One moment. Okay. Uh, let me get to the screen, if you don't mind, okay? One moment. Let me go to blog talk. Okay, I have your number here. Yeah, one moment here. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, you got it? Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you, other lawyer. Yes, sir. Uh, Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Oh. Goodbye. Hold on, let me get it. Let me get it. Let me make sure I have it. Uh, Sister Sabrina? Yeah, where is it? It's one of the last ones I had Are name. you still with me? They, they may be gone. Okay. Oh, the, the, the Blog Talk ended. Okay, let me grab the rest, though. There yeah, it is. 610. Okay, got it. Uh -huh. I know. Five. Okay, I got that. All right. One moment, folks. Uh, we, we're, we're winding down for the show. And I thank you all. I mean, we've kept it steady of 1,400 to 1,300 strong yeah. during the whole broadcast. All praises be to the most high. I mean, you are really supporting this. I, and I appreciate you, brothers and sisters, on YouTube and on Blog Talk. I mean, hey, hey. hey. What a needed broadcast from week to week. And I thank the most high for the audience that I know if we have a few thousand on or 1,500, mm -hmm. that this thing is going to spread like wildfire and it's needed. Our brothers and sisters need to know what's going on. We are under attack with these with these so-called holidays. All right, I'm going to send this right now to uh, Bishop of Moth of Philadelphia to contact. Let's see here. And, you know, I got to have him on soon with this also, obviously. Okay. I just sent it to him for those. If, if you're out there, Sister Sabrina, don't worry about it. I sent, please call for gathering in Philadelphia. As we speak, I'm multitasking. <laughs> the last thing I wanted to put out there, because I, I don't want people to believe that it's just Christians being uh, singled out here. Like I've mentioned earlier for those who, who were on. There was instances where we showed we wanted to hear uh, not only Christian perspectives, but Muslims as well as Jewish perspectives. And there was a lot of vagueness. The only uh, religion that who really put a put a stamp on it that actually told the truth concerning Halloween was the Muslims. But they do it on purpose because they know that Christians more so are pagan. So it's 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 on. The, they have a special interest to expose the paganism in Christianity to convert people to Islam. That's why they give it out. But I'll give it some, that's why they stand against Muslims, I mean Islam, in, in, in some cases. Mm -hmm. But they also uh, benefit financially through their businesses on Halloween, right? Now, on another note, speaking of kidnapping, I want to put this out there. I remember this story years ago. In 2014, vic kidnapped victim now tells husband courtroom of or ordeal. Here it is. A five-year-old girl was kidnapped from a West Philadelphia school in January by a woman dressed in a Muslim style, style scarf left. She said she was the child's mother. Christina uh, Ruggister's right is charged in connection with the crime, right? Now, I heard this story in Philadelphia. Why am I putting this out there, brothers and sisters? Well, this is why I'm putting it out there. It's not just Christians here. When it comes to these child sacrifices and all that, you have to realize this woman put on a burqa, went in and claimed the child that wasn't hers. The child was probably prepped for sacrifice, folks. And this is not just a white thing. Like we mentioned last week, there's black people everywhere that are part of initiations mm -hmm. in Masons or what you would call uh, the women are called uh, 
the women masons. Uh, Eastern stars. Eastern stars that are being initiated where they have to kidnap children and do all types of... Uh, now, these people live right around the corner from you, be right amongst you, okay? And it'd be their responsibility to be jumped into these initiations by doing things to kids. Or if they're higher priests, which are rabbis and all that, need children for sacrifice. Now, now there's an exchange. They'll make sure they set you up with business and hook you up in the hood and you'll, you'll be able to flaunt your blackness, your power only amongst black people for a price, black children. What we're mentioning, brothers and sisters, is more prevalent than you can imagine. Okay? These college children that are part of fraternities and all that, <laughs> you will be shocked with some of their initiations when it comes to mm -hmm. kidnapping and, and what they have to do with children and all that. Look up Skull and Bone, when it, you know, uh, Yale and Harvard, Skull and Bone and all that. Okay, the Skull and Bone of, 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 of Yale. And initiations of Harvard and all that. Brothers and sisters, it's everywhere. We were born in a satanic world controlled by Satanists. And it's, a, it's, it's upon us to shine a light on it and to protect our children. Now, at the end of the day, it's up to you. If you want to believe that you're covered by grace and want to do what you want to do and all things relative and God is going to just forgive you for whatever you do, that's on you. But the Bible tells us what? To train up a child. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us what? Because it don't stop with Christians. Muslims are a part of it too. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. And we'll end it on this. Read. Train up a child in the way he should go. Read it again. Train up a child in the way he should go. Train up a child in a way he should go, read. And when he is old. And when your child is old, get him while they're young. The same way I broke it down to that young, young man that was on the phone earlier. Break it down even on the elementary level. The, show them, start showing them now the difference between good and evil. Train up a child the way they shall go, read. And when he is old. And when that child comes of age. He will not depart from it. That child will not depart from it. Not to say your child will be perfect, but at least they'll have the truth in their conscience to make the right decision as an adult. <laughs> With that, I'm going to say Shalom. Uh, I can open it up for any elders who would like to say anything. We're well beyond the hours, but I'll open up the floor. If, if, if you have nothing to say, elders, we'll wish everyone God, God speed. But the floor is yours. I think you said it all, Elder. I think you said it all, Elder. So uh, Godspeed to all the brothers and sisters that are watching and uh, 